All right, so we are live once again. Great to be back, especially on a regular scheduled session. So if you're here at the beginning, great to have you. Saw quite a few of you hanging out, so thank you. Uh, feel free to leave your comments with any suggestions, feedback, questions, all of the above. Um, if you're joining us in the future, which is probably not for you. Um, feel free to skip ahead a little bit, although um, we're going to be starting here in like two minutes, so um, not really. I need to skip too far ahead. Um, but my favorite thing about watching videos is that you can press that little arrow to skip forward. And um, secret, I watch videos in 2x, but I've heard that video tutorials are better in 0.5x, so feel free to try that out for yourself. Okay, so, hey, Tate, great to have you, great to have you. Um, we're going to get started um, very soon. The first thing I wanted to do was create a list of all the things that we might possibly do. Um, so feel free to start submitting those in. I've been creating a list over the last week, so I'm going to go create a little poll, and then we'll get started. Okay, I will read out my ideas. I know they're not all great, um, but they are what they are. So, um, the idea that I guess we start off at, actually this is kind of a good one, Apple Picker Part 2, which would be like an economy. So, Apple Picker Part 2, where we go into more of an economy system. I'm not sure what that exactly means, but I really like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the other one I had was Building a House. This is a request on the channel, Building a House. Somebody thought that would be a good one to go a little bit more in depth in than our current video. Building a voting system. Ah, yes, this was a request we got through during the week. Building a voting system. And let's keep going. Next up, video verification built. Uh, I don't want to really want to do this today, but I, I'll, uh, well, you guys vote for it maybe. <laughs> no, let's not do that. Uh, we'll come back to that. Dice that add values together. That's a good one. Dice that add up values okay any suggestions we got you do watch them at point seven five. Oh, that's great <laughs> see verified it does work <laughs> uh, where can i get those i got one of them on amazon and the other was a gift and they have to be a set so as you're probably well aware um, but they were about 120 dollars on amazon so i thought that was pretty fair is their nice sturdy metal and um, I enjoy them, so. <laughs> Building a scoreboard to track keys being used. Uh, dun, 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 dun. I wish I understood that question more. Can you explain how a scoreboard could track keys? Because, like, keys um, are, like, a thing, right? Like, a name. So would it be, like, the name of the key and then a list of the players who've achieved that key? Or is it um, like a point for each key? Would love to some more information on that one. Okay. Oh, Janitor's Cup. Oh my goodness, that one is really hard. Um, hmm. Yeah, Janitor's Cup is a pretty difficult one. Uh, like even for me, um, the thing that you'd want to do differently than from his tutorial is to use what he suggests, which is the um, spin the new spin code block under motion. I think it's called spring spin. Um, and that he did the math for that manually, which is why his script looks way harder than it really is. Um, man, one day I'll have to stab at, do a stab at that. I've never done it myself, cause, but it is pretty cool. Multiple animations on one object when triggered. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Um, pretty easy to do. Can, oh, it's not gonna let me add any more options. Oh, oh no, wait, seriously? They're calling you four? This poll is limited to four. This is a problem. Okay, so we're gonna use your suggestions over mine. So I'm gonna remove building a house and put in um, multi, multiple animations on one trigger. Because there's a few different ways you can do that one. Uh, making a drum set where you can create an impact zone to trigger a sound. Okay. Um, yes, drum set. And respawn board for a moderator in your asset world. I implemented, uh, but it doesn't work. Um, hmm. I think I know what you're talking about. 
First of all, I've posted the poll. I'm going to quickly run through the poll, and then I'm going to try answering some of your questions and see how well I can do. Hey there, great to have you, Euro, Euro Residence. Great to have you, Euro Residence TV. And um, so yeah, there's the poll. I want to quickly walk through it. So the first one is Apple Picker Part 2, which is where we build upon last week's Apple Picker, and we go in more depth about economy systems and kind of building something where you can now purchase upgrades. Uh, I think that would be a really cool topic. Multiple animations on one trigger. We've already got to vote for that. That is, um, in my opinion, there's two ways to do it. Number one, you can have um, play animation as two, like just referencing two objects, but you can layer multiple animations together. And if you go to the uh, other more tab, there's a checkbox which allows you to play all the animations inside of a grouping simultaneously, uh, which has some pretty cool ideas. Um, drum set, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Hit some drums <laughs> and dice that add up values. Um, that would be where we'd roll two dice and it would sum the two together. Um, so in my head, the way that would work is each dice, uh, when it's let go, when its motion becomes close to zero, would then figure out which direction is up and then that would be the side that is whatever number that is and then it would send that to the um, controller and then that would add them. So that's one way to do that. Get quite a few votes for the uh, one, the multiple animations on one trigger. Oh, a couple votes for Apple Picker. Great stuff, you guys. Keep them coming. Um, let's see. Hey, Pigeon, great to have you. Uh, maybe combine whatever you create with an achievement. Hmm, I love achievements. They are so cool. Hard to explain, but keeping track of how many objects players are using on triggers. How many? Keep track of how many objects players are using. Objects players are using on triggers. Interesting. Maybe we can chat in game one day. <laughs> yes, it might be easier to explain. Please do. Um, sweet. And awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly run you through a couple things that I think would be kind of cool to get us started. And you guys can keep voting and submitting your questions and ideas. Uh, there are going to be more questions than I can answer, so I apologize if I don't see yours or answer it, but I will do my best. Okay. Here we go. Oh, and we need to switch the camera mode. Let's go. Boop, boop, doop. Desktop. Test one, two. Looks like it's coming from up there, so we're good. And switch it back over to, there we go. Okay. Hey y'all, oh, and let's close that menu. And one more menu to close, hide. And yep, we're in the clear, okay. Great, you guys, so welcome. This, um, Gonna give it two seconds to make sure I feel good. Yep, we feeling great. So <laughs> you'll remember last week we built this here. This was a random spawn point. So if you wanna go check out last week's live stream, I'd recommend doing it after this. Um, but yeah, we did a, when you walk in here, after the timer's up, it's gonna choose um, somebody randomly to be it and the rest will get spawned to the other spawn point. I still need to package this up and add it to the essentials bundle. Um, we also worked on some attachable legs. I think I'm gonna delete this, but I saved it just in case. We had this really cool RGB remote, um, so that's awesome. So everything in here, I still need to package up. The slime is from a few um, streams ago, but can't wait. And then here's Apple Picker, and you'll remember that Apple Picker was this press the button and it does the thing. Um, and then you compete against your friend that you have. Uh, maybe I don't, uh, just kidding. Uh, so over here, we've got a blue guy. I built this for fun the other day as a challenge and um, it's kind of neat. It's not perfect. It needs to use relative positions right now. It's determining the positions the arms are going to in advance, which is causing them to get too long rather than um, staying short. It's also really laggy, but I wanted to, so this is kind of like my asset pending warehouse area. Um, so there's things that are being worked on. And um, so that's what this is. And then I wanted to show you real quick uh, something maybe a little dangerous. Dangerous. Um, we're going to try and give you guys some more assets. Now, most people are on the copy one. If you've been added recently, you're probably in copy two, three, or four. Um, but I try to get as many people in this copy as possible. And we're just going to run on over here. And if you wanted to stop in and say hi and have access to copy one, feel free to join. Um, we won't be here for long, but I wanted to show you really quick a couple things that have been added to the video assets pack. 
And so here we go. <laughs> Let's see what you guys are saying while we travel. Let's see. Oh, lots of votes on this multiple. Wow. This is great. Great job, you guys. Keep voting and making your suggestions. I know you had a banner respawn board. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. So we want to look at that while we're in here. That's true. Um, any tutorials on how an, to add an image? <laughs> I'll show you how to add an image in Horizon. It is not officially supported, and I encourage you to vote for. I'm going to get the link. Command T, user voice. On user voice, there is a request that I made asking them to let us bring in images because we all want it and it would really level up our worlds in so many ways. Um, so I'm gonna grab this link. Please go and vote for this. The more votes we get, the more likely it is they're going to get this added. And there you are. So um, yeah, that one is basically asking them to let us bring in photos, videos, audio, music, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We really need it. Logos would be great um, and so much more. So, um, but there is a workaround and I should be able to show it to you when we get here. So I very rarely do this. Um, like I said, this could be dangerous. Um, <laughs> we're heading into the edit mode. In fact, we might not even get there. I've been having a lot of trouble traveling today. Um, but basically normally what I'll do is I completely wipe the world. So when I make an update to uh, an asset pack, I go to, I'll give you the website I'll even it's facebook.com slash Facebook horizon slash her creations, my creations, something like that. And on that website, you can roll back your world. So I roll it back to an empty world when it was first created. And that allows me to clean the world out without having to worry about any junk that people have been adding, um, which you guys don't need to worry about because you're importing it into an empty world and it imports the public version. And um, so, yeah. And yep. So we, we <laughs> didn't make it. Um, that's sad. I really did want to get there. I'll try it one more time as I still have some questions to answer and I'm not I was able to, yeah, we'll see, hopefully. Please, little button. Okay, let's see what else you got. So yeah, the picture, we're gonna answer that. We're gonna look at that board. Haven't voted on that yet, we will do. Thank you, Tape2, appreciate you. What's up, Lucky Pro, great to have you. And uh, thanks for knowing my name. Yes, I am Lake05, great to be here. Also known as Blue Shirt Guy. I put this on specifically for the stream, so. <laughs> You know, oh, thank you, Pigeon. Appreciate you voting. All right, David says, I'm watching in virtual desktop. Wish I could watch and follow along. I know, right? Wouldn't that be amazing? Seriously, that's the dream. One day, I think we'll get there. It's just a lot, a lot of little pieces got to happen. So t it does look like we might load in. So that's good news. So, okay, let's talk about the photo thing because I think I can explain that without having to show you. So the way it works is you plot your selfie stick. You go, pop. Selfie stick appears, you grab it, and then you go into your menu and you search up a username of somebody who hasn't created an avatar and it'll show the picture that they have set in their Oculus profile or Facebook profile. You can then take a picture using your selfie stick of the menu of their profile picture and then set it as the image for that world. And then you make basically an empty world, publish it or publish it as unlisted and use that door image as your image and it's super grainy, super low quality, but people have basically gone and made fake accounts, uploaded images, profile pictures, taken pictures of that. And one guy even made like an animation by taking a bunch of pictures. Um, it's not worth the headache. Just vote for the thing that I posted. But if you really wanna know how to do it, that's how to do it. It doesn't look great, which is big problem number one for me. But um, I really just want big like actual support for photos so I can bring in high resolution logos, etc. So, oh my gosh, we made it. So remember I told you this was dangerous? Look at this, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, somehow someone managed to import the essentials bundle and move it up just a little bit. I don't even know how that's possible, but <laughs> great job. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, I can't even get into build mode. Wait, this is my world, isn't it? I, I what? I can't get into build, oh, there we go, yes. Oh man, so anyway, um, but this is not a big deal because when you import a world, it imports the clean copy, not this copy. Um, if my fingers would start working, we could get into build mode. Um, I just don't think it's gonna happen. So I'm gonna show you this one and this should work. Okay, so a few of you probably already know this, but about a month ago, I developed a new feature called the asset wand. And there's been a lot of requests for it. Um, I hadn't published it because there was a lot of bugs. Uh, first of all, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. 
got really, really close. Um, but the goal was that I'd pack every single asset. We have over 150 assets in the essentials like group catalog, and they're not all able to fit into the world because it's over 100% capacity. And so the idea was that we'd build this wand and you'd be able to place out the assets that you want. The problem is almost every asset we make is scripted. And so it's got some form of script running on it. And if you try to duplicate that asset, it loses the script because the asset despawns taking the script with it and the new duplication doesn't retain a reference to the new script if it's duplicated together. Really, 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 really stinks. Um, so it's something I've flagged to the Horizon team. I don't think it's gonna get fixed. It's been like that forever. Um, I'm sure it's not a high priority. Uh, I'd actually rather they add images than fix that bug, right? Um, but the thing that I realized though is it would work for static objects. And so what I did is I created this wand and today I spent hours adding 50 static objects to the wand. And this is including a ton of new stuff that we've never had in the essentials um, pack before. So you're now gonna be able to spawn these assets in, which I'll demonstrate now that we're here. All right, so you'll see it says static assets, they're right here. You can follow the arrow. And I've got my trusty broomstick. Do do do. All right, hello asset wand. So this is the asset wand. And um, there we go. It's taking a second to load, probably because this maze was loading in. It kind of lags out for the first few seconds. But now that we're in here, I'm going to show you first the door. So this door is to the asset wand world. And this is just a static asset playground. You can have up to 10 people with their own asset wands, which is surprisingly a lot of fun because you can basically parkour around. And um, I'll show you that. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. I guess it's less fun because I had to make a little hack to get this out on time. Um, so here is the KO Cloud Cube Pack. So you'll notice the clouds aren't in the sky anymore. And I was gonna fly around on that little thing to place these, but this is fine. So anyway, it's gonna spawn in the KO Cloud Pack. And it's gonna take a second to load in because there's a lot of clouds in that pack. But there they are. So now you have access to all of these and then you'd go into build mode duplicate them and it would give you a copy and then if you wanted the cube cloud pack you could load that in and so basically you can swap between using your a and b buttons and pressing your trigger allows you to uh, load that in there we go so there's the cube cloud pack and that should have despawned the previous one which keeps us from going over capacity and then we've got a bush just to general <laughs> there you go there's a bush here's a little bonsai tree um and right now it's only spawning one of these at a time. I definitely have plans to make this a little better in the future, but it's fine for now. All right, another wild plant. And so basically there's 50 assets in here and you push press your um, A and B button to cycle through them. And when you find one, you can place it down. So here's an alternate selfie sign that we haven't actually put in here before. This is the one from the Tours Beach. So there you have it. Lots of cool new assets. And these are all coming to the asset library uh, or to your video asset pack soon. If you don't have access to the video asset pack, you can either come here to the video asset showroom and take a selfie and post it to the world page, or you can post a comment with your username on YouTube. Cool. So I think that's the bulk of the things I wanted to show in here because that's a pretty big update in and of itself. There was, oh, this guy over here. Um, <clears throat> I've been meaning to add this to the essentials pack for a while. I wanted to art it out a lot more, make it a little cleaner. But as you can see, we've got this little, um, I, it's a Ferris wheel. It's a simple Ferris wheel and it's using a pretty, pretty cool method where it's got a invisible cube here and it's moving to that. And then you'll see that this is actually rotating. And so while this is rotating around, it is constantly moving to, and we'll see that in build mode a little bit cleaner. I believe this plays better in published mode. I'm just thinking this is build mode lag as there's just so many scripted items in this world. But there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the world now. And um, we wanted to look really quickly over at this guy here. This is the um, moderator paper. Um, let me know if this isn't what you were talking about. I 
sorry, I forgot your name, but you'd asked about the moderation paper. So this moderation paper, the way it works is you open up here and you need to set a bunch of people as VIPs. So you can see Lakeso 5 has been added to the VIP list. You then thumbstick to the right to duplicate and then type in another name. Capitalization does matter. So make sure it's your exact name. And then you basically create a list of all the people you want to be VIPs. And so then only the VIPs can grab this. And then when you're holding on to the paper, you'll be able to cycle through the people who are in the world. So there's buttons, it all has instructions on it. Um, so that's the bulk of it. And it's just those two pieces. It's this guy plus this guy. So hopefully that helps explain it. I'm not sure what problems you're having beyond that kind of setup. I'd recommend maybe getting another copy um, if you're still having issues. Oh, this guy, this isn't, this is nothing crazy, but it's just some like floor numbers that you can stand on. I really like it. Anyway, <laughs> there's a few new assets around here you'll find, but uh, yeah, very exciting. And I would like to add some more soon. So, okay. going to take a break, look at your questions. And as we're doing that, we're going to travel to the asset room so we can get started building our first asset, which I think we're going to do, um, Actually, I'm going to do a new empty world just so we don't have any lag create. And this will be called today's date. It doesn't say today's date. What is today's date? <laughs> uh, that doesn't say either. Um, resume. And my computer says today is July 24th. Okay. July 24th live. Okay. And create. Whew. All right, let's see what we got here. Do, 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 do. So there's an image in Horizon Worlds. Okay, so we talked about the imaging. We did that. Question was again, ban respawn moderator paper. Okay, it didn't work. Hopefully that explained that. And that was by reversed Raider. So I wanna see if you post anything else. Please look up Captain Jack Morgan, okay. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Rainmaker, for voting. Appreciate you. That's so awesome. Okay, let's see. Asked to get some of your things, but when I went to get them, I couldn't put them in my assets. I'm not sure how to import the whole world. I'm just starting out. Great question. I will show you very quickly how to do that. So to import a world, all you do is open up your menu. Go to the create tab. That's this bottom right one. You're going to see a collaboration invite. Once you see the collaboration invite, oh, <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, you can then accept the invite. And then from the three dot icon, you can import the world. I'm not going to do that just in case. But um, as you can see, there's this import world button. And then once that imports, all of the items will be there. And then you can start adding things to your asset library as usual. Um, and if you don't know how to do that as usual, there is a video it might be on our channel, it might be on the Horizon Worlds channel on how to import assets. Just comment if you don't know how to add assets and I will grab that link. It's only a couple minutes. Okay, very cool. Please look me up. I saw that the other day, everything is duped. Oh no, <laughs> yeah, don't go in there, Tape. Whatever you're doing, just never go into the essentials pack. Like, go into an empty world. I, I promise, you, you don't want to. Perfect for a Fortnite like world. Oh yeah, yeah, right, Pigeon? <laughs> uh, da, da, da. Whilst perhaps Horizon may support images in the near future, is there any information upon videos in Horizon? I have no idea. Um, damn, I wish, <laughs> I really do. Uh, you know, I, I want videos more than any other being in Horizon. And I, I swear that's the case because if I could put a tutorial video next to every single asset, it would just be game changing. I mean, imagine being able to pull something out and it literally has detailed information on how to use it, how it was made, like how to modify it. And it's all right there. I just, it would change the game. It'd take me forever to like update stuff, but oh, I really want video. <laughs> I really do. So yeah. <laughs> Is the time code block public yet? I don't know. I've never played with it. Um, let's see if I have it. Um, if I do have it, will I get in trouble for showing you? I don't know. <laughs> they did announce it, right? Like they publicly said there's time coming into Horizon and something, something like that, right? So um, my assumption would be that there is a new operator for getting time. That would be my guess. Achievements, player entitlements, time, current date and time, current timestamp. Um, so 
definitely, if this is not out to the public, I'm not supposed to share this with you, but I'm going to do it anyway. So <laughs> don't get me in trouble, guys. Um, what we're going to do is quickly variable as string these and see what it debug prints. So we know what is a current timestamp and what is the current date and time in milliseconds. No, we'll, we'll take um, seconds. Yeah, we'll do, sure. Okay, we'll do them both in minutes. What are these printing? So script, stop. Oh, I got to attach the script to something. And here's something to attach it to. Attach script one. Okay. And the answer is play. 295162.7. Um, whatever that is, that is your current timestamp in minutes. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to use that. Uh, <laughs> and then 22 is the current date. So it's 22 past the hour. Okay. So that's how you get that. You can get like day of the month, week, year. Nice. So if you want to build a clock, that seems like that'd be pretty easy to do. The timestamp seems like something you'd be able to like, say, if I reset this, we'd get a like slightly future number, right? So it's like one minute. It's only like half a minute forward. So you could use the timestamp to progress like say you had apple picker on a like auto picker like a robot that auto picked apples for you um that could be that'd be really cool so i think this is going to be super awesome i don't think it's ready for the public unless everybody can see that can everybody see that let me know <laughs> let me know in the comments can you guys see time code or did i just get some big troubles <laughs> uh okay so let's see uh, I'm having issues with both respawn and ban. I can't get it to do either. I do, I need to attach a spawn point. Ah, yes, you do need to attach spawn points for both the respawn point and the ban point. So those are just drag the pill over and that will probably solve your issue. So glad I managed to make the live stream. Hey, great to have you, Michael Gregory. So great you're here. If you are interested, you were the one who asked about the voting system. If you still wanted to do voting, please comment that. I kind of pulled it from our list of possibilities because I hadn't heard any interest in it. But if that's something people are interested in, we will definitely look into that. All right. They did announce it, yes. Okay, so I feel like slightly better because it's like, it's public knowledge, right? Um, if anyone has had the use of Linux timestamp, they can easily use this. Ah, very nice, very cool. Awesome guys, so let's go ahead and get started with multiple animations on one trigger. I mean, it's an overwhelming 50% of you guys have voted for multiple animations playing on a single trigger. So um, I'm gonna start with like kind of a basic. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to figure out how I wanna do this intro for the video. Stretch, oh, stretch, and go. Hey everybody, today we're gonna take a quick, oh, let's clear that. <laughs> Okay. Hey everybody, today we're gonna to take a quick look at building a trigger that plays multiple animations. And so I just wanna build this as simple as possible to get us started. So we've got a trigger. We need a reference for where that trigger will be. So we'll use this cube. We also need a couple items that are animated. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this noodle. And then I'm also gonna grab a ball. And those will be our two animated objects. And then we need a script. Okay, and if that seems like a lot of things, don't worry. We're gonna take it one piece at a time. So let's start with the noodle. That's definitely the best way to go. So basically we wanna start with this noodle that's gonna go up and down. So we place it where we want it. And then on our like tab properties, <laughs> We can open up the properties by putting our hand inside and pressing forward towards the three dot icon. Then from here on the properties panel, we can find animation. Ah, there we go. Let's go ahead and click that. We'll go ahead and select the record button. Now making sure to turn off snapping by pulling down on the left thumbstick, we can then slide this up smoothly, let go, and then hit stop. Now that we've got this animation that goes up, we can then cause this to loop back and forth. And now we can determine if it goes back on start so we can see what that looks like from world start. There you go, very nice. We'll go ahead and turn that off. We're gonna leave it on back and forth. We're not gonna put it on play on start. The speed can go a little bit slower. So I'm gonna drop it to 0.5 speed, nice. And like that, we have an up and down motion. Now I wanna create this kind of, this is a terrible object. So don't tell anybody I made this but this is a thing and we're gonna place this here. And now you can imagine that this one is going to slide back and forth. So we're gonna do the same thing, animated, record, and then we're going to make sure snapping is off and then slide along, hit the stop button. And now that we've done that, we're also going to see what that looks like when we play it back and forth and play it on start to see it. 
nice way way too fast we're going to drop this one to 0.2 so it's a five times slower there we go that's a little better now we're going to go turn off play on start we now have two objects that are animated but there's no way to play the animation since it's not playing on start which is why we have this button and so what i'm going to do now is take this and build a little pedestal so we're going to place that down like that let's go see what the height is of this and that is not high enough so let's slide that up a little bit and then I wanted to build a button on top and that looks like a pretty believable button all right so we got our button and since we know that buttons should be red we're gonna make this button red and I like to make these buttons unlit and gives that kind of a nice glosh glow there we go and then we'll make this a solid stone piece that it is on very nice and also take that down just a little bit okay so this is just aesthetically what it's going to look like. You could even go into this and turn off collisions so that your hand can actually like put your hand into the button. And then this trigger is what's going to be running the script. And so when something enters this trigger, specifically a player, you'll see if we open up the properties panel, it's currently set to trigger on players. Then something can happen. Something can happen being the key here. And so to make something happen, we need to attach a script. So we're going to go attach our script. It's currently named script one, but we're going to name that very rename that very soon, which will update the name in here as well. You don't have to change anything; it just automatically connects it. Um, but we've got it set up for players. We've got it attached to the script, and now we can take this little trigger and place it on this red piece here. I don't want these to be the exact same size because I just don't want it to flicker. So I'm going to scale it up place it down there and then turn off snapping and then slide that to there. There we have it, that is our trigger. Because I know we're gonna need the properties panel this open, I'm gonna leave that open for a minute. Also gonna go ahead and grab our script and bring it down into the general vicinity so that it's easy to find later on. Okay, what is a good name for this? We're gonna call this trigger plays animation. And so what I wanted to show you was the easiest way first and foremost. So trigger plays animation. We do not need WinWorld to start it, so we click on this, pull down to delete. We can go over to our events tab where you'll scroll down till you find when trigger is entered by player. Drag that over to the left. And now what we want to do is recognize that this trigger will be entered by a player, which is going to cause this event to go off. We then want to, on our actions tab, cause an animation to play, which if you scroll down, you'll see there's play animation. So go ahead and drag two of these over to the left. There we go. Now this is not going to play an animation on the trigger. It's gonna play an animation on these other objects. So we go ahead and delete these two pills out of here. And with that empty, we need to create some references to those objects. To reference other objects, you'll head to the variables tab, create new variable, drop down, select object, and we'll call this first one 01 for object one. I like to abbreviate, it's just faster to type as typing in VR is not the funnest thing in the world. There we go. So we got our two objects, one and two, drag and drop those into the respective pill slots. And now that we have that set up, we just need to reference them over here. So now we have two empty pill slots here. If we open up the properties panel for this, you'll see that there is a pill here. You can then drag that into slot one and we'll do that for this one as well. Do, do, do. And slot two. Okay, so with those set up, this should be functional. We can test it out now by going to the script panel, hitting stop and play. That's just a nicety. You don't have to hit stop and play, but it's a good habit to get into. All right, so we hit the button. It's now going to cause both animations to play simultaneously and they should come to a stop after they're done. Nope, they don't. Um, so you'd also wanna build a button that does the exact same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. You'd also wanna build a button that does the exact same thing to stop it. But you might be thinking, wouldn't it be cool if there was like a button that one player had to hold their hand in to cause the animation to play and then when they pull their hand out, it stops playing. Well, we can actually do that too. So if we go into our script here, we had when triggers enter by player play the animation. If we go back to our events tab, you'll see when triggers exited by player, we can drop that below. And then back on our actions tab, there is a pause animation button, which we're just gonna drag over. I'm gonna duplicate by thumb sticking to the right. And then we can drag this down, also duplicate by thumb sticking to the right for both of the object variables replacing self. Now we've set it up so that when the triggers exit by the player, it will stop, we'll stop the world and then hit play so it starts fresh head on in and then put my hand in and you'll see it's playing. And then when I let go, it pauses. 
And then when I put my hand in, it continues playing. So you can imagine some really cool like mini games, adventure maps, courses, parkour maps, etc. All using this exact same script. It doesn't have to be for two. It could be for three or four or however many options, how many animations you want. But we could take this in a completely different direction, which is what I'd like to do next. So <laughs> first of all, uh, comment and let me know what you thought of that. Was that useful, helpful? I, uh, I hope I went at a good like detail enough pace to show you kind of like the basics of this. And then the next thing we're going to do is going to take this a little bit further and we're going to see a two layer animation as I like to call it. All right. Sorry, just reading your guys' comments. Really appreciate the feedback as we're going. Anyone has used the Linux? Ah, you would like some insight on the voting system. Very nice. I would love to talk about it. Can triggers still be activated when you combine it with a moving or animated object? For some reason, triggers work stationary for me, but not when I combine with a moving object. That is a great question. Can the animation events be grouped within one object and still functional? The animations, yes. So yes, that's that is actually what we're going to show you next. Great question, Craig. All right. So um, I'm going to answer the first question because I don't actually know the answer. The question was, can we animate this and cause the trigger to still work? So we've grouped it together. We're going to open it up, hit animated and record, and then slide this down, open back up. Oh, I forgot to hit slide that up. Nice. Stop and loop. Oh, that is such a weird back and forth. That's that's not good. Okay, let's go and like um, turn this off. Hit record, try again, and slide, and stop, and back and forth on start. There we go. Okay, so now we have an animated trigger. So the question was, can you interact with it? And the answer seems to be, is the world stopped? Do I need to hit stop and play? Perhaps this is something that doesn't work with uh, this mode. Let's see, we are on visit 2.0, I believe. Yes, we are. Um, so it could be a change for, to visit 2.0. Visit 2.0 is different. Um, this definitely used to be a thing. So that should be working. Double check, my hand's in it. Yeah, so that does not seem to be working. So the answer is no, no, it does not seem to work anymore. Um, what is the answer to that, you might ask? Uh, well, the answer is, Watch this. Um, this is going to be some nasty quick coding. So just kind of bear with me here. So we need a reference. So we create a new object and we're going to call this um, the button. And so we know that the button is supposed to be what causes the trigger to go off, right? So we have a button reference. And then what we want to do is up here, there's a new event called on update. And if you never use this, it's not scary. You just put it at the top. It's running every frame of this world, which means it can cause a lot of lag if you're using a lot of stuff in here. So be careful with it. What we're going to do is say move self to delete this position. Then over on our operators tab, scroll down to position of object. I went too far down there. This position of object. And then the object reference will be the button. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop the world, which we have. Open up this, zoom in, select the trigger, and then hit the zoom out to bring the trigger out of this with us. We also need to zoom in and open up the properties panel for the button. Zoom out by double clicking is another alternative to pressing the menu. And then open up the trigger. You'll see the button reference, which we can then drag over to the cube. Notice that you can go either direction with the reference pill, which is kind of cool. We've now referenced the cube, and now we are going to move this trigger in sync with the button. So you should see it moving. It doesn't appear to be moving in sync with the trigger. Check, I don't see it. Um, is it at zero, zero, zero? It is at zero, zero, zero. So I probably messed something up, let's check. The script says move self to position of button. Everything looks good. So, ah, because it's an, it's a hand animated object, hand animations reference locally. Uh, it's not, they don't, it doesn't give you the right position. Okay. Um, <laughs> is there a way to get that position because it's hand animated? I guess if, it, if it, this wasn't hand animated, you'd be fine since it was... <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's turn animation off and show you what it would look like if it was scripted with animation. Just just to show you that it does it does work. It should be. Oh, okay. 
It's also not referencing the button for some reason. It's referencing the grouped object. That is strange. I have a feeling there's a lot of little changes that have happened since Visit 2.0 came out, and I am still learning them just like you guys are. Um, Because, yeah, that's definitely not where it's supposed to be referencing to. Move to position of button, and the button... Just double check that I referenced this correctly. Zoom, stop. Open this up. Yeah, this is referencing the button. So strange. Yeah, it's it's um it's gonna be difficult if you wanted to set that up. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that, but yeah. Okay, let's go undo a bunch of things. And sorry for some of the flicker there, guys. And I think that's as far back as we're gonna go. Turn off animation on this and ungroup it. There we go. Okay, so we got our trigger back. We're gonna go back to our script, delete this portion from the beginning, delete the button. And so the second part of this question, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm gonna quickly take a peek at your questions and comments. And then, can you do this with animals? Can you do this with animals? Good question. Um, like make a dog's head move or a cat purr. There's a lot you really can do. Um, so I think that would be a, that'd be a hard one. I'm um, thinking about it. Let me think about it. Can you invert an orb to negative one? Uh, we're not going to do any object inversion, number one, because Horizon does not support it um, and that they keep deprecating any methods that people have found that are kind of like hacky ways to make it happen. Um, so the original method as of a year and a half ago, that is the only method I was aware of, was that you would multiply the scale by negative one. That was fixed within a week of people finding it out. And ever since, whenever someone finds out how to invert shapes, they usually patch it. I think there's a couple methods that people have found to, that break it. Um, but more or less, if I was to tell you right now, which I don't know, first of all, I don't know, but if I was to tell you, it would get removed next week. So, um, I'm not, I don't support it. It's getting removed over and over and over again. Every world that's ever had it has been basically broken by it. So I don't recommend it. My understanding of why is the engine just isn't designed to run inversion. So it's something that there is a request for it on the user voice form that I posted a link to earlier. You can go there and vote for that as well. And perhaps they'll add an official support for it, which would be kind of cool. Um, or opacity on objects would be also really cool. Both of those I think would be pretty sweet. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't feel crazy, Michael. Um, things have changed dramatically since Visit 2.0 came out. I'm not sure exactly what they did to change it, but my understanding is it's a completely new rendering system. Um, so it's just basically meant to speed up the speed of worlds, but it also means that a lot of stuff isn't working. I'm a really, really afraid to update the asset pack to Visit 2.0. Um, my reset button, as far as I'm aware, does not work in Visit 2.0, but it works flawlessly in 1.0. And I don't know why it's like, it literally just does reset world. So it's, it shouldn't be broken. Um, and I think the, this, my personal opinion is that the horizon world team is currently trying to fix all the 2.0 bugs that they weren't aware of when they published it like a week or two weeks ago. Um, so hopefully we'll start seeing fixes for that coming out in the next month. Okay. Tiny representative group. Yes, I can't wait for you to get it more in Europe. I <laughs> I have a suspicion that this new age thing that just came out where you now have to say is it 18 or under or for every or is it 18 plus or for everyone is related to trying to get open to the rest of the European Union because they're so strict over there, which is not a bad thing. I mean, there's a lot of things you can eat in the US that are illegal in Europe. So I'm not saying it's um, <laughs> a bad thing. <clears throat> but I think that's part of what we're um, seeing happen is them getting ready for though, hopefully soon. Hey, Alex, once you are finished, can I have a word with you? <laughs> hopefully you'll still remember. Hey, Tono, great to see you. It's been a very long time. Great to hear from you. Okay. Um, I probably don't have time, to be honest, though. Uh, I hate to say that, though. I really do. I just baby and everything. Um, we just have our baby girls week and a half old now, and it's an absolute blessing and simultaneously very, very time consuming. Everything I do takes like twice as long as usual. Um, so like I, I really can't commit to much, which is really hard. So I apologize uh, for my lack of time. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be coming back. We'll see. Maybe never. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, so the thing that we wanted to get into real quick was the multi-layered animation. So um, I feel like this was a really good start. So I want to kind of pick up here 
And so to our editor team, I think we can just pick up right after we had finished building this and it was functional, um, not needing to go through the whole like things are broken section. Um, so what I'd like to do now is kind of just pick up and continue. So the next thing I'd like to show you, um, let's get the viewing angle right okay so the next thing I'd like to show you is a two-layer animation and so this is kind of a cool first demonstration and we're gonna go ahead and close out of this but this is this is so cool I mean it's absolutely awesome and so the first thing you need to know is you pull out a couple objects that you want to animate and we're just gonna make this look really really simple it'll be inner tubes attached to poles and <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, okay? Sometimes things are just things. There's an inner tube attached to a pole and then we're gonna stretch it and then add another inner tube to the other side. And if that's not the coolest thing you've ever seen, well, you haven't seen much, just kidding. Okay, so <laughs> duplicate and I did this wrong. Okay, wait, wait, sorry, sorry, undo. I was trying to be funny and then I forgot what I was doing. Bad Alex, or Lakes. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is turn on snapping, and then we're going to this rotation point here. We can now duplicate and rotate, which is gonna give us a lot of these little donuts. Can I stand in the donut? I can these are really tiny donuts, but you can stand in them, and that was the key. They, you also get stuck in them, but <laughs> we'll fix that never. Um, so now that we've created this, we want to group it together. So we select all of these items, and then we're going to group them. And so the first thing that you think about with this is we want to create some rotation animation. So we open up this grouping, and then we go down to the animated and hit record. We can then turn off snapping to get a smooth recording, and then we're going to slide this around in a circle and it's not perfect, it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And then, I mean, if you didn't like that, you could always do it yourself again, right? And so then we're gonna change the speed to 0.1 to make it look a little smoother than it really is. And if we pl play on start and then hit back and forth, you'll see what this looks like. I also need to start the world. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. So we've got this really cool single layer animation. It spins continuously and then it'll go backwards once it gets to the end. So we're gonna go ahead and turn off play on start. The next thing we wanna do is create a center beam that this can move up and along. And I like the idea of using a cylinder. So we're going to use the cylinder here and we're gonna place that right there. Okay, so snapping that to the center and then sliding it down and then sliding it up like that. Now, the problem is I want it to move along this pole. I don't want the pole to move up and down. And so, <laughs> as I think about it, but one way I used to do this that was just way easier is you'd place it like that. <clears throat> you would then group the two together. And after grouping the two, we can then record another animation. So we'll go animated, hit record, and then we slide this up smoothly to there and then hit stop and then hit loop back and forth and give the speed something like 0.5. This one should be a lot nicer. And now we have two animations that have been grouped together. And so from the properties panel of this grouping on the more tab, you're gonna find this animate group. If we turn this on, when you animate the group, it causes both animations to play. And so what we're gonna do is take this button and duplicate it. And so in the previous example, you saw that we had to reference both animations to cause them to play. And in this one, we're only gonna reference the one animation. So I can go ahead and delete the bottom one. And then we're gonna delete this one and then change the reference to be this entire grouping. And we're only going to reference in one of these pills and that's okay. And, excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, and then now we'll go to the script tab, stop and play. Head back in and da, 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 da. all right. So now I'm the, I don't see the green button, but that's okay. But I am the conductor at a fair. I put my hand in and the carnival ride starts going up. It spins and it comes back down and I can jump on and it doesn't let me play because somebody has to be standing here at all times. But that's pretty neat. I mean, um, I hope that demonstrates what you were asking. If it's not, please let me know. But that is the more advanced way to take two animations and layer them together. So, awesome. And then just like 
uh, if we wanted to take this maybe a, a quick step further, uh, one other way that you could modify this to be like go in. <clears throat> Okay, let's um. Da -ba -dum -ba -dum. I really want this red button, so let me grab that first of all. Okay, so we've got this red button here. Now it looks better, and now that that looks better than whatever this was, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all of this, bring our our script over here, and then what I want to do, beep, maybe, stop the world. Okay, and lock this oh no i can open this now okay there we go so now if we think of this script as being just for this guy here right we no longer need an animation on o2 so we can delete that and we can go over here and delete o2 which i believe is going to cause me to have a small bug because i put it on o2 <laughs> so then we open up this and put the reference pill back in very nice and then back here in our script what if we wanted this trigger to cause the animation to play for maybe 60 seconds and then it stops and then you have to hit the button again for it to play again so the way to do that is to come over here and we can create a new variable for a number this is an optional step but i find it is very nice so we'll call this seconds and this allows us to create a variable um, that we can just change whenever we need to. The next thing you want to do is go to your actions tab. And at the top of your actions, we can set trigger detection. So what this is going to do is it's going to cause the trigger to be non-detecting for a minute. And so we set trigger detection to false. Now that causes the animation. To, so, the, so the first thing that's going to happen is the animation is going to play. The trigger is going to set to false so it no longer detects anything. And then the next thing we want to do is head to our events tab and grab when event is received. We're just placing it below here for a second. And then you see send event with delay right below it. We're going to place that below the detection. And then we're going to just stick with my event for now. That's fine. It's a default name. And we're going to change this number pill here to the variable we created. You could also just type in 60 if you wanted to. Now that we have the number of seconds there, we can then say when my event is received, we want the detection to be turned back on. So we set that back to true. You notice I duplicated my thumb sticking to the right. And then when the trigger was exited is when we were causing the animation to pause. We can actually just drag that up into here. And now the animation will pause after the 60 seconds. We can then delete this. And for our demonstration, I'm actually gonna change this to six seconds and go ahead and try it out. So we'll go ahead and hit play world, hop in here, and I'm gonna do the baddest parkour move. Oh yeah, oh no, no, oh. You know, I thought I was cool. And then it should stop any second. There it goes, nice. And you'd wanna like try and figure out what the timing is to make sure it always times correctly, but yeah, like that. <laughs> so uh, let me know if you have any more questions on this and thank you so much for the request. Ooh, it is 83 degrees and I'm wearing a VR headset. Yeah, <laughs> you feel it? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Thank you, Tate, appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I sleep, yeah. Babies are fun, thank you, yes. <laughs> thank you, Pigeon, thank you guys so much. How did you spin it so smoothly? I didn't spin it smoothly at all. So I'm sorry if that looks smooth. Um, the reason it looks smooth is because I changed the speed. I'll show you that in one second. How would you scripted? How would you do it with scripted rotations? I love scripted rotations, so that's a great question. Um, can you make a water sprinkler that rotates real quick? Um, a water sprinkler that r rotates. Yeah, that's actually pretty easy too. Okay, so. Um, the first question that we wanted to answer is the one that's relevant to here. So the rotation that's happening. So first of all, we have this outer layer of animation, which has been set to 0.5 speed. And then if we zoom in, this guy is the one that's rotating. If I press forward and hold, then zoom out, you can see that this one is the rotation animation. It is set to 0.1 speed. So the reason it looks smooth is because of how slow it's going. So I just spun it way fast and not smoothly at all. But because it's going so slow, you just can't tell that it's really bad. Um, yeah, I was not happy with the rotation whatsoever. So now that we've talked about this um, at length, and I think we've gone as far as we're going to go, I'm not keeping this. I think it's a pretty easy script to build on your own. Um, and I'd actually rather do it with um, a with a... <laughs> Sorry, I'm losing my words. But with a script, as was suggested. And so we actually have a script for that. And I'm kind of wondering if I have it in my library. 
Dun, 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 dun. I might just need to import the essentials bundle. I don't want to import this because it's so high capacity, but I've already done it. It'll be here in just a moment. Um, so if you didn't catch that, what we did is we went to the create tab. We either, if you go to your collaboration invites and accept the invite, or you come back over here, hit the info button for the asset copy that you're a part of, hit the three dot button and then hit import world. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all the excess stuff in here that we don't need. And this is starting to load in. Whew. Okay, so the question first was, how would you do it with scripted rotations? Um, <laughs> trying to figure out how to say this politely, Craigus, so don't take this the wrong way. There's an example in the video essentials bundle already, so feel free to go and like tear it apart and look at it. Um, like it, it literally is in, in the uh, assets pack. So <laughs> don't take it the wrong way, but it's, it, it's this one here. Um, uh, it's exactly the exact same thing, just with a script. And so um, I won't be rebuilding that script today, but what you'll see happening here is that we have rotation on this object, and then it's also moving up this way. And I don't even remember how I did it, but I don't think it was that difficult. I think we just call rotate by over time. Yeah, so we just do a rotate by over time and then a move to over time, which causes it to do both the rotation and movement along these axes. So sorry, it's a little laggy right now. It should be fixed in just a moment. Script. And stop world and clear. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna hit play world because this world just can bug out. <clears throat> but what you'll see here is we have this object. We then tell it to rotate by the amount that we want it to rotate by. We then send it moving upwards over time. And then rotation probably needs to happen in its own loop depending on how fast you want it to rotate. Like if you want it to rotate really fast, that's faster than the speed at which it goes up. I think these are currently in sync, so it's not doing that. Um, but then here you can see that it's um, rotating. And actually it is doing it separately, isn't it? Oh yeah, and it's lurping through. Yeah, <laughs> it's super fancy. Oh, it's it's a short script too. Okay, let me read it to you. Um, so we start at the world position, at the start of the world, we save the origin position and the origin rotation of the spinny piece. We then send loop to self. And then in the loop, we have an iterator that we are constantly iterating between zero and six. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five. When it gets to six, it goes back to zero. So that's what modulus does, is it says when it's six, return zero. And so that causes it to just constantly cycle between zero and five, with five being the highest value it gets to. We then rotate self by the rota rotate by amount. So however much it's supposed to rotate by, we then have a rotation delay, which is how long it takes to rotate. And then over here, we say if the iterator equals zero or three, that's when we want it to move. Ah, and so what we've done here is we've grabbed the origin position and then we take the origin position plus the upward direction of self, which gives it the direction of this pole. And then we multiply that by the up by amount, which gives us the ability to say how far up are we going? And then taking the iterator and dividing it by three returns zero. I assume. So it's like when the iterator equals three, that gives us the um, origin position. So it's going to choose between moving to this position or this position. Um, this is <laughs> a really mathematical way of doing it. There's definitely a less mathy way of doing this, but it's clean ish, clean ish. Okay, cool. Sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that answered your question, Greg. I said, I, I hope I wasn't offensive. I didn't mean to be if I was. Um, there is also another rotation script in here where you could combine a couple layers of rotation. So right where is it is this the nope i could swear there's a rotate by script in here i'm not sure where it is i might have misplaced it but there is probably there's object return ah here's continuous rotation um so it's not attached to anything oh there it is Never mind, it is attached to something. So this will constantly rotate, and this is just a demo item, but you can attach that item. And so what we've seen some people do is they'll take this fair ride here, and they will rotate this in 170 this way, and then they'll take these and rotate it 170 the opposite direction, which causes it to look like it's moving. Did I say that right? No, it keeps it static on the thing. It's complicated. I've seen people do it. 
anyway, it's a very interesting way of doing it. Once this is out there, you'll be able to take this one apart. And the way this one works is really easy. This is the only piece that's rotating. It's using the same continuous rotation script. And then these guys are just moving to the position of their um, trigger. So it's just constantly saying move to trigger, move to trigger, move to trigger, which is just the easiest way, in my opinion, to make a Ferris wheel. Cool. <laughs> Okay, so we wanted to look at the water sprinkler that rotates. And so the way that this is gonna work is way too easy because basically we just take the simple launcher script. So we grab one of these launchers. We then grab our simple rotation script from over here that we were just talking about. And then it doesn't matter what we get to use as our object. So I'm just gonna make this look like a sprinkler. Drag, attach this to the top there. You can make this look more like a sprinkler than this um, and group and then open and then drop down and select the continuous rotation script, which can be hard to find in a world that has this many scripts in it. Uh, there it is, continuous rotation. There we go. We're going to use rotate by not 180, but 170. And doesn't need to have any of that on it. Okay, that's fine. And then hit play world and it should work. So there it goes. Um, obviously you could change the size of the projectiles and the projectile speed, but for all intents and purposes, that is a spinning sprinkler. <laughs> I noticed that it's not perfectly centered and so I'm gonna demonstrate how to fix that real quick. Um, so you'll notice that it's not spinning around its center. And so this is kind of like what we do with doors. And so to, 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 to open this up, zoom in, we basically need an invisible counterpiece to this guy that is identical in the location that it's going to. So we'll just drag that over to here, drag that down to here, and then slide that up to here. And you might be thinking that looks awful. Uh, it does, <laughs> you could turn off visibility and collidability. And now, oh, we gotta zoom it back in, let go. Okay, it's inside the grouping. Now the grouping center is around this axis. So when it spins, it spins around that axis. And now we can hit play and it will spin correctly. I'm kind of regretting hitting play though because of the lag in this world, but there it goes. And stop. Okay, so hopefully that answered your um, scripted launcher question. Let's see what else you guys have in terms of questions. Okay. I think I've answered all the rotation questions. So I think we're good. Does it fit the theme of Ferris wheel, but we could considerably make one donut appendage disappear after half a second while your hand is in the trigger. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. I noticed your radio with speakers is missing the remote to work it. Can you help me with that? Your radio with speakers missing the remote to work it. Um, okay, good, Craig. I appreciate it. I'm <laughs> glad. I was a little nervous. But um, yeah, I do encourage you to take a look and tear that apart. Um, so there is no remote for the speaker. I assume this is what you're talking about here. Um, this is the buttons that you press. So you can see these are all the buttons you can press to work with the speaker. It's also got the slider. I think somebody else basically went up to this, selected all of this stuff, right? And then was like, group it together make it um, interactive and grabbable. And that might be what you're referring to. So that's not a part of the asset pack, but it's something like people have remixed to make. And as you can see, it should work. Should, does it? Oh, maybe it doesn't work. Oh, because you can't make interactive triggers anymore. Oh, that's so sad. Why would they change that? Oh no, the world's just stopped. <laughs> okay, <laughs> apologize. <laughs> Uh, that's another thing that I haven't gotten used to yet is that you can grab stuff when the world is um, not started. Super strange. And I did hit play. Select there. Okay. Sorry, the world is still loading. There's uh, a ton of scripting happening over there. I should really delete some of these scripts that are really intense on world start. Yeah. 
but they're so cool. <laughs> There's so much cool stuff in here. It's like, I don't want to delete anything. Uh, one day I will find a way to manage this so it doesn't have to be so intense. So you can see this is currently the thing that's causing the most lag is it's trying to calculate the um, maze generation over here. So this one is pretty intense because then it has to basically think of how to build a path. You can see it happens pretty fast. I guess maybe it's not that intense. <laughs> I don't know. Oops, did I just delete the thing I didn't want to delete? Undo. Oh. Okay, are we good? I think we're good. And <laughs> come on in and grab this guy. All right, please play music. Play, please. No, no, they really are broken. They really broke interactive triggers, huh? Huh, I, I am, I'm shook. I don't know what to think about this. So to double check just to make sure if I open up the properties panel on this, let's select it and then open up that and then ungroup it and it should now work, right? So I jump, boop. The script probably didn't get reset. That's probably what I'm thinking. Okay, I think that reset the script and hit play. Nope, hmm, what am I missing? Maybe it's this piece and let go. I'm like, I don't want to reset the world because of the lag, <laughs> but um, stop world. Can't get list item, expected number, oh. Okay, so this is another really fun bug that you probably have experienced. Um, is when you delete a scripted object, the script gets detached and all the references, well, maybe the script didn't get detached, but all the references are gone, um, except for the text object for some reason, who knows. Um, but basically, because it's no longer referencing anything, it doesn't actually function. That's okay. Another item to delete. But anyway, so I think I more or less showed it. Uh, yeah, more or less showed that. <laughs> I'm going to try and delete some stuff out of here to delete some of the lag. And this lightsaber is pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, you know, I could make two separate asset worlds. The problem, and and um, there's no really good way to say this. I have spent probably three to 400 hours, maybe more, adding people to the asset bundle. And so... If we made two separate worlds, uh, I'd either have to only give you half of it a month and then every other month swap it out or have to re-add everybody. And um, theoretically, we're getting the essentials assets added to the, the library, but that's been theoretically true for the last two months or however long it's been since I signed that contract and nothing's really moved forward. So still fingers crossed we get something in the asset library soon. But if that doesn't happen, it just it's, it's not feasible to have more than one asset world. Um, when you have it going out to thousands of people, unfortunately, we really need asset sharing. Like, really. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, they are totally, totally, totally taking assets that they like from the Essentials assets and making their own versions of it, which I'm just like baffled by because I'm totally offering my assets to them for free. I'm like, please take anything you want from the asset library and add it to yours anytime, please just add it. I don't want any money, no compensation, just get it out to people. And you probably are referring to the, um, the marshmallow, right? Like I just saw that one today and I was like, dude, did they follow my tutorial to make this? <laughs> and I was just cracking up. I was like, it literally is the exact same function. Like you put it in the bowl, you can eat it, you can roast it, the color changes. Like they redid the script a little bit. They probably just looked at how it was and like re-scripted in their own way because it's not the same script, but it was just hysterical. I was like, it's identical in functionality, um, which is just crazy, absolutely crazy. So. I don't know. Fingers crossed we get that to them. Let's see. What are we working on next, you guys? Um, I see a lot of people have voted for dice that add up. So I think that would be a fun one to do. And I think I've answered all your guys' questions. So I think I'm going to make another poll since we've gotten this poll pretty far. And I'm going to sit that down for a second. Oh, you won't be able to hear me. Now you can hear me. <laughs> Sorry, um, just set my headset down and I realize you can't hear me when I do that. 
So uh, the thing that I wanted to do real quick was create another poll with some uh, more suggestions in it. We've got next step, we're going to do dice that add up values. There's a lot of votes for a drum kit. Uh, Apple Picker's got a few votes, not nearly as many as the others though. So I think we're going to hold off on Apple Picker for another day. For another day. Uh, it's definitely economy. Going into that is something that's huge on my, my list. So uh, maybe that's something we will talk about at some point. But let's go and create another poll. We wanted to add a voting system. This was something that Michael Gregory had asked about. And I'm not sure if there was another um, request, but I'm basically gonna take the current three that remain, two, two that remain, and add that to it. Yep, so we're gonna do dice next, so end poll, and create a new poll. Okay, and this poll is gonna say, What's next? Question mark. And then we want to say, um, I forgot what the questions were. Uh, drum set. We had um, poll voting system. We're calling that a voting system. We have, I guess I will put economy back in there just in case that is something that people get more interested in. Uh, so we'll call it Apple here, two. And then. Was there another thing that we wanted to look at? Yeah, I would definitely do drums with triggers too. I've got one actually already built in a Beat Saber knockoff. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like we probably have some other things that we can put in this list. Uh, let's see. I'm going to add in building a house because that was a request that somebody had so there we go there are some new options for you to vote for so please go ahead and vote for those I will quickly run through what they are so you guys can kind of understand what they are the drum set will basically be us taking some mallets and making a um, very responsive drum set so the current problem with a triggered response is it's very slow so you want it to be instantaneous right and so to do that we have to use local scripting it's a little bit harder to work with um, but it's not that hard to set up. I think we could get it done in just a few minutes. So that'd be a cool one. Um, the next thing that we're looking at is the voting system. So this is where you would have a list of people who are in your world and you'd cycle through and select one player to vote for. Uh, so that's a pretty cool option. A lot of people voting for that. <laughs> so that's neat. Um, the economy is where we, you know, take the apple picker a step further. So previously we were just adding to the person's player persistent variable. And so we'd take that a step further where you, now you can take those points that the players earned and then buy upgrades. And so that would be kind of like building an economy. The last one there is building a house. So this is, if you're really interested in it, we can um, look into how to build a house in more detail on a much like kind of slower pace and take any questions or requests you have about building a house. Um, not something I'm a super fan of. I know there was somebody who was asking for us to go in more depth on this. This is why I'm, I'm putting it out here. But we do have a video on this already. It's called Building Mansion Windows. It was with Merck. He did an amazing job. So definitely encourage you to check that one out. Although I do understand it is relatively fast paced if you've never built in Horizon before. So with that, uh, voting systems will be coming up very soon. We're going to go quickly build some dice. Uh, I'm going to figure this out in the fastest way possible because we obviously want to get to voting. So. Uh, Awesome, here we go. I make a drum set using triggers. What would you give to have, what you would give to have you come to a world I haven't published yet because of script problems? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> having, but I can't get it to work properly. Uh, so first and foremost, it is so normal to have bugs. Um, definitely, as you can see, I'm running into them left and right over here. And I'm just kind of racing through because there's so much to cover today. But um, it just, sometimes it can take hours. I mean, literally, I've got a video. If you're really interested in seeing someone struggle through bugs, um, check out the Elevator Raw video. It's four hours, five hours, maybe five and a half. I can't remember. I remember it was a long day, and there is a, literally one hour in there of just nothing but me struggling through a bug and wishing I wasn't recording so I could curse because it was just so frustrating. And I'm sure you've all been in that spot. It's just so hard. Um, and you just don't know what's happening. You don't know if it's a horizon thing, if it's your thing, like what's going on. 90% um, of the time, I find my bugs are really simple things that I've missed. Like almost every single time it's like, oh, I forgot to reference the asset or I forgot to like drag the pill over. That's the correct pill. Like really simple stuff is almost always the case in my bugs. Um, the other thing 
that I think is really important that I would have done had I not been recording for the elevator video is I would have just walked away, right? Like I would have just stopped and I would come back the next day or come back in a couple hours. I think that's extremely important to come back with a fresh pair of eyes. And then my other, script, my other scripting kind of debug tip is to read your script from top to bottom. Think about it logically. If you've organized it kind of like what I do, which is in chronological order, that should help. Uh, but when I read it through from top to bottom with a fresh pair of eyes, I'm usually catching the things that I didn't, I just missed. Um, it's almost always something simple like, oh, I forgot to bring over the reference pill or it's running on self and it can't actually run on self. So hopefully that helps. Uh, I do apologize, I don't have nearly enough time in the day, but there are a lot of amazing people in this community. You might actually find somebody in this chat here, or you might find them at some of the uh, really awesome community events. Tuesdays, you've got scripting office hours. Wednesdays, there's a waffle event, as well as the Horizon World Tours uh, community event. And then on Thursdays, there's Janimator's office, hour, office hours. Um, and all of those are really great events, and I believe they all take place at 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in Horizon. So definitely encourage you to um, try connecting with people. Also, the Horizon Worlds Community Group on Facebook or Discord is another great place to connect with people. Um, I know I'm visibly like one of these people who can solve bugs, uh, but there's quite literally hundreds that can help. And so hopefully you'll be able to connect with one of them or um, someone else who can connect with you. Uh, so again, apologies. I wish I had more time. Make a hundred copies of me, just a ray tool to the left. Y'all get a copy. I'll be in your world. See you, see you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, Pigeon asks, what's better, detecting a trigger is entered by object or when colliding with object to make it more responsive? The answer to that question is not very clear. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't use detecting with object collision because you're putting a lot of, a lot on the physics engine. You're also going to have to deal, so like physics engine just is a gnarly beast. And so anytime you can remove interactions with the physics engine is good. So the collision event, if you can remove that and focus on a trigger event can be very useful, but you also might want it to like stop the mallet from going through anyway. So that might be a reason to do it. The other reason I don't like object collisions is because you usually get a double hit where you have to basically put in a Boolean that causes you to only detect it one time. And that can be tricky, especially with music where you might be wanting it to do like kind of a bump, bump, bump. So it's, it's a hard question. I, I, I would play around with it, see what you like, what works best for you. In terms of responsiveness, I don't know that there's a right or a wrong answer. As long as they're all locally scripted, it should be happening, you know, one sixtieth of a second, so. Restarting is a good is a good solution too. It can definitely help. All right, so we're going to head back in. Give me a second to load this back over for you guys, and switch. Boom! There we go. All right, y'all are back. <clears throat> Here we go. So the first thing we wanted to look at was dice, and this world has a lot in it. It's gonna make this really hard to run in. So I think I'm just gonna make a new world. And this is a good asset one. So I'm gonna just go put this in the asset world. That just makes sense. Okay, we going to video asset planning. Check out tutorials in your horizon menu. Yes, please do. Hit that learn button. <laughs> it's in the top right and um, yeah, very proud of that learn button. So hopefully it helps you guys if you're uh, trying it out. I'd love to get more videos in there, but it's so hard. It is very, very difficult to do. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about and are super confused right now, uh, we're talking about this learn button right here, which loads up a bunch of videos, which is super duper cool. And um, oh my gosh, it's me. What? What? <laughs> uh, isn't that funny? It's so weird when you see and hear yourself in VR. Okay, so we're back here. We've got this thing counting down and I just don't want it to function. So I'm gonna delete this on world star to put an if <clears throat> and then a Boolean and then say false. So it doesn't run, there we go. Okay, 
So what we wanted to do was make a dice. And if you're gonna be in VR playing with dice, you want them to be big. So I've got this soft cube. I really don't like soft cubes, but I feel like for this, it's a good one because uh, it's gonna be able to roll. And I'm thinking of traditional dice that kind of have a kind of divot in, right? So you think of like that. And so the there's one, and then you might do two like that, right? And I probably should look up exactly what faces these go on, but I'm not going to, should I? Should I probably should. Okay, <laughs> what faces do numbers on dice go? It's a really good question. Command T, dice numbered faces layout, okay. So it goes one diagonal to two, three, so one, three, two. Okay, this is interesting. So this two goes here, and then we need a three. And so to do a three, we need to slide this in, but we need to make sure the array is equal distance. So like that, then select, and then place at an angle like that. Okay, so looking at this, it goes one, three, then six will be on bottom. So you got, oh, because it's got to be seven, right? So sevens are always on opposite. That's right. I remember that. I remember that from when I used to be a dice person. Um, also, the two is diagonal, so that's weird. Um, diagonal, the two, rotate. There we go. And then six is going to be three lines. So if I duplicate this and then duplicate a copy to the side like that. That does look like a six. It also is placed like this below. Okay, there we go. And then to the right of the three is a five and the five is pretty easy. So we're gonna slide a duplicate copy of this, deselect, then rotate like that, then select that and place that right here. There we go. So there's our five. And last but not least on the back end, we have a four, which is basically a five without the center. So we'll place that there and delete. There we go. Look at them dice. I mean, it's a thing. <laughs> okay, we got our first dice. It's definitely uh, probably bumpier than it should be. So what I wanna do first and foremost is go and grab an unlit material type of white. No, not white, I wanted to do black, excuse me. There we go. So we want all of these little divots to be black and then we want this to be a plastic, very, very shiny plastic white. That probably is too shiny. So we're gonna take that down a little bit and grab this texture, drop that to 50%. And it's not happy with me. Do that. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so that's our dice. Now the other thing I wanted to do was to make sure that it rolled evenly. And so I'm gonna make all of the circles non-collidable. So we're gonna go and take Collidable off. And then we're going to select this one more time, starting from here. Select, notice that the Y is pointing up towards one, that's important. We'll also note that X is to the left, X is to the right, forward and back. That will all be very important as we're writing the script. Okay, so there we have our dice. Now we're going to start by making this interactive and grabbable with physics. So we'll turn that to both. And won't do custom gravity. Not yet at least. Come on in. Look at this giant little dice ball. That's fun. That's fun. It's kind of weird that it, you know, lands flat. It kind of feels like it should be landing on like kind of at the divot. So debating whether to make those spheres actually collidable. So zoom in. Yeah, I'm going to try it out and see what it looks like. Do, 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 do. Actually, there's kind of a question here of deselect. Oh no. Oh no. No. Okay. Um, so there was this idea I had, which was okay, these are non collidable. So select everything again. Select everything. Uh, open it up. Uh, sorry. Everything except for the 
um, except for this cube in the center. And then because these are all identical, theoretically I can go into the attributes tab and change the scale on all of these to like 0.2 and wrong one. So put that back to 0.8 and then try this one, 0.2. Nope, wrong one, back to 0.8. Try this one, 0.2. Hey, okay. That's pretty good. That's that's perfect, that's nearly perfect. Okay, then zoom out and then rotate that flat. Nice, that looks great. Okay, that's gonna be better. So basically uh, what we're really trying to do here is we're really trying to make this a very efficient, uh, low capacity, not going to be super intense on the physics engine. Using a soft cube is already super intense. And every time you add a mesh, it adds more math that it has to be calculated against. And so we just, we want to reduce the amount of math so that the world runs more efficiently. Okay. So we got that back and we're going to select slide, duplicate, and try rolling these. So in a normal game of dice, you'd throw, and man, those are fun. Look at that, three and five, I got an eight. And so you'd count that up and you'd realize it was eight. So the question is how do we script it so that it knows, oh, that was also eight. Like how does it know that that's eight? And so I think the first part is either we can, seven, seven, very nice. This is too much fun, oh my gosh. Throwing these giant dice is way more fun than you might think just by itself, look another seven. Um, and so what we do is we calculate the upward direction and figure out which one it is. And so I think the way that we're gonna do this is way easier than um, it should be. So if you find this is hacky, that's okay because I like to do things the easy way and I think this is the easy way. I could be wrong, but we're gonna call these dice count and we're gonna need to run this on some sort of like um, pyramid, which will represent our controller. And in fact, we actually don't need to run this on a period because we can run this on a text object, right? And so here's our text object and we're just gonna say current role and then put a colon. So this gives us the size of the text. So we'll turn auto fit off, type in like 30. That's way too big. No, it's not. Okay. So there's our current role. And now that we have current role here, what we wanna do is keep track of two number variables. So we're gonna create a number variable called dice one. And then we're gonna create another number variable called dice two. There we go. And then we're gonna receive events which will give us that value. So we'll say when event is received, when event is received, and we'll just name these D1. And I know the, that, don't, don't be confused. This is not a D1 or a D2, these are D6s. All right, and then that's gonna be received with a number parameter called amount. There we go, confirm. And then what we're gonna do with D1 and D2 is update the value. So we set these variables for dice one and dice two to the amount. And then we also want to display. So we say when event display is received, display. And then up in here, we're also going to send event to object display. And then we'll do that here as well. And then what display is gonna do is it's gonna display current role and then it'll say the amount at the end. So then we go new object, it's running on self. So this is the text object itself. So then all we need to do is actions tab, display text, and the text is a concatenation of two amounts. So the first thing is the string of text that it's gonna say, right? So I say string input. And this is what we wrote before, which is, sorry, this guy's in the way. Um, let's try rotating this a little bit. Okay, so this is current role. And then we probably wanna put in a colon after that. 
and then maybe a break even so it goes below it. So that's how you do a break right there, which puts it on the second line. And then the second thing we need in here is a variable as string because the number is not a string, so we convert it to a string. And then under our operators, we can add two numbers together. And the numbers that we're adding are dice one plus dice two. And that will give us the current rule. Very nice. Okay, so now what we need to do is have a dice script. And so each of these dice is going to calculate itself. So we'll go up here. And then we need to know who the control is. So we create a new object variable called control, CTRL, confirm. And then when world is started, we don't need that. I think I renamed this, didn't I? I guess I didn't. We'll call this die. And then we need a new Boolean called I am D1. And so this will be true for D1, but not for D2. And then what we want to do is say when object is released, when object is released by player, we're then going to send a loop to self. So we say send event with delay of 0.5 seconds. And this will be called loop, loop, confirm. And then when event loop is received, we're gonna continue looping every second until, or every 0.5 seconds until it is stopped. And so what we need to do is determine if it's moving. So we say if, and then we'll use an else and we'll save that for later. So if in the parameter that we're checking is the speed and we wanna make sure it is faster than 0.1. I'm not sure if this is too much or not. Um, so as long as it's greater than, and then we go to motion, we should have, oh, excuse me, under operators, object, velocity of object, which we might need to get, turn into a magnitude. I'm not sure. So velocity of self, yeah, we need to use magnitude of. So if you scroll down to vector, you can convert velocity from a X, Y, Z value into a um, distance value, I believe is what that'll be. Um, so velocity of self, as long as it's greater than 0.1, we'll then continue looping until it stops moving. Once it has stopped moving, we then say else, then we send an event to, send event to the IMD1, or excuse me, send event to the controller, and this event is called D1 or D2. And then we use an if else for which dice it is. So we say if I am D1, then we send D1 else, uh, well, let's grab another else, um, else we send D2. And then the number value, we're actually gonna pull this from a list. So if we go to, um, well, that was the idea, but is there a way to do that easily? Let's see. Um, <laughs> so basically my idea was that we'd make a list of all the upward directions, assume that it can only closely align with one. Um, so if you think about using a, to check the parallelness of a direction, we do the that, but we could round it to the nearest one, right? So this would be, zero one zero i think I'm trying to think this through no it wouldn't be okay let's see if we make a list of vectors that represent the directions of up so this will be called directions then the position value and we can add values by clicking add new item so zero there is no zero um, we then can say item at index one, so index of the item, and then we know that x, this is plus one, so zero, one, zero, and then we can add a new item for two, and then two is at x is positive, and so that would be positive one zero zero and then three is over here on the z positive so that'd be zero zero one 
So this is where I said it would be a little hacky. <laughs> and then four is on the back, which is negative on the Z. So negative one here. And then five is negative one, zero, zero, which leaves six being zero, negative one. Perfect. Okay, so those represent the upward directions of each of these. And so what we need to do is then figure that out right here. And I guess the easiest way to do that would be to run a while loop and then run new variable. So we'll say vector, this will be called um, iterator list, I list. So this is that <clears throat> way to iterate through list that we talked about last week. <clears throat> if you don't remember, don't worry, because I'm going to show it again. And then we're going to create a new vector called current up. Okay. So our goal in this while loop is to set the current up to the value. So we say set current up to an item from the list. And so we say get item from this list. Um, and it's actually going to be the iterator list and it's going to be the item at index zero. Okay. And then that's going to only happen if something is true. And so we say if the value is within a certain range, which we'll get to in just a second. <clears throat> Sorry, my, my brain is like functioning way, way too fast. Um, so the thing I want to remember before I forget is right here, once we've determined which one, we want to clear the iterator list so that it no longer continues running. And so down here under list, we can clear the I list. Okay. And then we also need to set I list up here. And so what an iterator list allows us to do is iterate through this list of directions without having to um, without having to mess with this list, this list can just stay static. And so the first thing we need to do is actually remove an item at index zero. So remove item at index zero from this list of I list. So that gets rid of that zero value. Um, but is that a good idea because we want these in order? Yes, that's fine because we don't really care about the order. So then what we're doing is saying while the length, sorry, one second. So then what we're doing is saying while the length of the I list, so I gotta scroll down to lists and we can grab length of this iterator list is greater than zero, we're gonna continue going through this list. And every single time we're going to remove item at index zero, so it eventually has nothing left in it. Okay, so now we're looping through the list. <laughs> and then we're gonna only do this thing if the value is parallel. And we know that two parallel ones are equal to one. So if we say that they are greater than 0.75, that should work for anything greater than a 45 degree angle. Math is probably a little rough there. Um, and then what we need to do is check parallel vectors. Okay, so if you don't know what this means, let me catch you up to speed here. So this vector here is zero, one, zero, up, right? And so if we say, is this vector parallel to zero, one, zero? The answer is yes, yes it is. And so then it's going to return us uh, one, the value is one if they're both parallel. And so as long as this is pointing up, doesn't matter how it's rotated around this way, it's going to return one. And then as it slowly starts to rotate this way, it becomes less than one. And so I think we're going to about this direction. So if it landed on a hill, it should still work. Um, but if it lands on like a really steep hill, it's not gonna work. Um, so that should work. And then to get that parallelness, we use a function called, where is it? And the name has slipped my brain, so apologies again. Uh, da, 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 da. We're looking for dot product. So here is dot. We're gonna drag that into here. And the values that we're gonna dot is getting the item from the list. And I'm not confident in this, so I'm just kind of fingers crossed it's gonna work and we're gonna kind of guess and check together. So 
if this doesn't work, we can quickly fix it. So we get item at zero from the I list. And then we're checking that with the current up of this. And this is where I'm a little uncertain. So it says, what is the upward direction of self? And I want to basically debug print whatever this is so that I can see what it is. So we debug print upward direction of self variable as string. And there we go. So by debug printing the upper direction of self, when this does roll through, we should be receiving it up. And I really wanna just test this right off the bat. So let's go and grab this when world is started. So I can start seeing this right now. And we're gonna go and attach this to this object. So now if I go in and attack the die script, and we'll reference the controller in a minute, but we can see that it's up was zero, one, zero, perfect. And so then if I rotate this, say to two, sorry. Okay, so if I rotate this to two and let go, we received 0 0.50, point eight. Oh, so point 0.8 would be pretty parallel to zero, zero, 001. Is it zero, zero, 001? Um, two, that's the question. So we go to the direction list. Zero, zero, 001 is three. So that's not right. Let's try this again and see what I've done wrong. So it's basically, it's telling me that the upward direction is pointing this way. And that's not actually what I want to check, which is part of the problem. I want to know what is going up. Okay, this is why I wanted to stop. Someone's probably screaming in the comments, you're going the wrong way, you're going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, let me see if I can think it through in my brain before we try and figure this out. Um, bum, 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 bum. Global. If I rotate this, we then get the up is pointing in that direction and it's telling us that that's the direction the up is pointing, which isn't helpful. We want to know which side is facing up. Um, I think there's some multiplication we have to do with these values. Let me see if some of you have already solved this and have put it in the comments. <laughs> oh, so embarrassing. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> okay. So as nobody else caught this, that's okay. Um, I'm trying to figure it out and I just like, I've, I've been learning math because of Horizon. So I probably look like a math whiz in most of the videos because I've spent so much time learning it because of Horizon, but we're learning this one together. So I thought for sure it was gonna be a little bit easier than this, but let's see, what we need to do is figure out which side is facing up and how do we figure out which side is facing up? We do that by saying, like I could create a list of all the different ways to do that, but that's really inefficient. Um, so like this, for instance, um, this example would be the cross. No, this is the forward direction. So we could check if the forward direction is parallel to zero, one, zero. And then we could just do that six times to check for all the different sides. I didn't really want to do that because I thought that would be inefficient. Um, it's definitely a way we could do it, but I didn't really want to. Um, so we could check the forward direction and then the inverse forward direction. And we could also probably get it from doing a normalize and then check if it's negative or positive. Let's see, hmm, 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 hmm. We should get it down to three. 
which side is facing up. Let me quickly Google. I'm not gonna lie, I use a lot of Googling too. So maybe getting the current up and then iterate through the list to see which one has the higher dot product. It didn't work, Pigeon. So to, to the short of it was it didn't actually work. I did, I did try, I'm really sad. Um, and so what I need to do is command T, how to get side that is facing up. That didn't help. <laughs> um, dun, 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 dun. That didn't help. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, I think we're gonna do it the only way that I actually know how to. I definitely feel like there's a solution here that I'm missing. And I would love if somebody does know the solution, comment it below so I can learn. Um, but the way that we're gonna do this is maybe a little easier to understand because it's just a bunch of if statements. It's not nearly as fun, but that's okay. So what we wanna do then is say multiply, like Waffle has told me he basically takes this value and multiplies it by this. He gets rotation of multiplies it by this and that gives him the rotation. Um, I think of the forward direction or something like that. I think that's what that's calculating. So I don't think that's relevant here, <clears throat> but maybe that is relevant because if we got the rotation of self multiply it by what we're trying to check against. No, okay, we're not gonna do that. Um, sorry, sorry, I'm really, really trying. Okay, we're going to, this is gonna hurt me really hard. We're just gonna delete this. Oh, that's okay, that's okay, it's okay. It's no big deal. We don't need this, we don't need this, don't need this, okay. What we do need is we need to determine which side. So we're gonna call this I am up, okay? And then what we need to do is run a bunch of ifs to check it. So when it says it's no longer moving, we then have a bunch of ifs and else ifs that determine what's going to happen. And I am convinced I can do it in three ifs. And so basically we know that the dice is, oops, undo and rotate. So we know that this dice, <laughs> no, it's just not working. Okay. Um, it can either be upward this way or downward. And so if this is up, it's one. If this is down, it's negative one. So my thought here is we take the absolute value and we say, Sorry, I'm trying to work through the math in my head. Uh, dun, dun, dun. We did get it to work when it was zero, one, zero. It should also work if it was ne zero, negative one, zero. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, try again. Take two. Uh, we'll keep the else if, delete this one. So if these are parallel. So once again, we're going to be checking the amount parallel. So we're going to go ahead and re-put back in the dot product. We're also going to put in the uh, number value of 0.75. I think this is okay. 0.75. And then place that there. And then what we're grabbing is the upward direction of the object. And then that's for self. And we compare that vector with the vector we had typed in manually earlier, which is zero, one, zero. Okay, so if that's the case, then we know that the dice value I am up is one. So that's where we type in this and type set. I am up to one. Okay, there we go. So now I am up is set to one. Now, if that's not the case, then we can do another else if and say, what if, the upward direction is parallel to negative one, meaning it's pointing down. Well, if that's the case, then I am six. So we set this to six. And then we continue doing this for every side. So then we say else if 
you're like, wow, this is so much easier. Why didn't you do this from the beginning? Uh, I, I probably should have. I'm sorry. Um, so then instead of checking upwards direction, now we're going to go back to our operators here and check the forward direction and say forward direction is of self. And so we know that the forward direction of this object is this one, right? It's X. And if you forget, because I forget all the time, you just pull out an object and it's forward is pacing towards you. So it's Z plus is forward direction. So if we go to here, Z plus is actually three. So X, Y, Z, so that's zero, one, zero, or excuse me, zero, zero, one, X, Y, and Z, so zero, zero, one. And so we say, if the forward direction itself is parallel to zero, one, or zero, zero, one, then we know that it is three. And if it is the inverse of that, so negative one, duplicate. If it is negative one, then it is four. Okay, we're halfway there. Well, over halfway there. So then the last two here are for our cross product. And so previously we're taking the forward direction and the upward direction, but if you cross these together, you get the leftward and rightward directions. And so we'll find cross product here. And then we're going to cross the forward and the upward. And I get these backwards all the time, so I don't remember if it's um, upward, cross forward is left or right. So we're just gonna guess and check and figure it out. So then this is five and two. So we'll just go ahead and say, this is a zero, this is a one, and oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Excuse me. This is a zero. This is a one. And then cross forward direction of upward direction. And then that will either equal two or five. So there's 50% chance we're right the first time. So that's good to me. Okay. And then we do else if zero, negative one. And then this one is five. And then I wanted to add an else in here in case something goes wrong. And this last else is kind of like a, a basically a, um, did I make a mistake? And then in this mistake check, I will debug print an error. So we'll type in seven. Seven is a problem. There's no dice seven. So there we go. That should work. And then to get this, checking on world start we're going to send this loop to self when world is started so we should have just received an event and clear stop and play and that should have happened already but it didn't ah because hmm maybe because it's still looping the magnitude never reached that let's debug print our magnitude and see what's going on there so we'll debug print magnitude and hit play and it's, there it goes, it's at zero. So the magnitude is not, so it stopped looping. It did say else. Oh, it says zero, it rolled zero, wait. What? Oh, no, 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 sorry, excuse me. <laughs> we never debug printed anything because nothing actually happened. This is good, this is actually a good thing. Okay, the reason nothing happened is because it's working. So I can delete this else. We can then go over to here, delete this. When world is started, it's going to run this exact same thing, which is great. When objects are released, it's going to run the same thing. We just need to reference the controller and these are functional. Yeah. So, okay. Now, did we build a controller or did I, yeah, the controller is this text object here. So let's reference, drop down, select the dice count. And then on here, reference, oopsie, let me drag that up here, reference text object. Sometimes that happens and it's difficult. There we go. Okay. So that's now referenced. This is D1. And because it's only going to count D1 at the beginning, we should get this updated right at the beginning. Oh, it didn't. Let's try that again. Roll to four. Please say four. Say four. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, Let's see, die is sending, oh right, it's supposed to send it with the number. I forgot to add the number right there. Like I said, simple, simple, simple things. Oh, look at roll to one, it works. It's already working, cool. And so then we'll dupe, delete, slide this over to the left, try to get them nice and 
tidy and then hit play. There we go. Should get a two. Did we get a two? Didn't get a two. Oh, because it didn't say die is two, right? Okay. Open this up, turn off this one because now this is D two. There we go. And stop and play. There we go. And it rolled two. Very nice. And so now we can roll that and it rolled an eight. Please say eight. That says three. Um, <laughs> what? How is that three? That doesn't make sense. Um, that is a three. No. Um, one. Okay. That's a one and a one. I give you that. It's a six. Okay. Maybe it's not looping for long enough. So if I let go, is that 10? No. Hmm. Throw it maybe? Landed on six. Okay, now it's saying 12. Interesting, I'm very curious. So now it should say seven. So I think the speed is, is too, on this die, we were saying only loop if it's moving more than 0.1. I think this speed needs to be more like 0.01 and we'll give that a go. So go ahead and hit stop and play. And then we really wanna check five and two and see if those are actually set up correctly. So let's just try it by putting five up and didn't work. Hmm. There, there it goes. Okay, I have a different suspicion of what's happening. 12 works, two, not so much. Okay, so we do two twos and it gives us a nine. Drop, really fast, I don't know. How do I? <laughs> nine, That that is correct. That should be seven, but it's not updating. Okay, so in debugging, you really wanna have like a lot of information about what's happening. And so you can like see where things could be possibly going wrong. So right here, we should be debug printing the amount when it comes in. So right here, we should debug print the amount. We'll do that as well down here. And then down here when we're de debug printing the display, we should debug print the number that's being displayed. So, and because these are all numbers, we should actually concatenate some more information about them. So we're gonna duplicate this in here and then say, yep, current role, and then duplicate this up here, delete that one, and then say current, so we'll call this um, D2, D2, and colon, and we don't need the break in these debug prints, that's silly. Um, Definitely don't break your debug prints. Uh, then we'll duplicate that up here, delete, and call this D1. And then I forgot my variable is string. So let's go grab that. And there we go. And duplicate. Okay. So now we're going to receive the information about each dice as it's coming in. And so when we hit play, we can see that we did receive one, one, and two. So that's good. And then if I rotate these around, Upside down, we'll see a six, six, and 12, which we do. And then if I select these and then rotate and then let go, we receive three, three. So seems like I've got something off here. Um, so let's see, three, three. It thinks five is three for some reason. Why does it think five is three? So if it thinks five is three, then it should think that two is four. So does it think two is four? No, it thinks two is also three. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have a suspicion Let's see here. Bum, bum, bum. 
either this is not specific enough or some of the math is wrong in here. So three is this third one to go off and it's checking the forward direction of south. And so maybe three's forward direction is close enough to that, that it's working. And so this is the next part where we wanted to start debug printing each of these. And so we'll go and say, debug print, uh, bum, 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 bum. and we definitely need to concatenate this so we can actually tell what we're doing. So we'll grab a string input so we can label it. And sorry, this is taking longer than I would have expected, guys. Um, this is one, so we'll say one colon, then we want to compare the, we want to know what the dot is of it. And then we need a variable as string that. Variable as string the dot. And then basically do that in each of these with their respective dots. And then say this is supposed to be for two. And this is supposed to be for three. And then, and since we're getting a ton of three, there we go. Um, let's just go ahead and see what happens here. So clear and stop and play. And so the first thing we get is the dot product for three was 0.86. And so it called that good enough. And so my question is, if I rotate this to be a three, so we're gonna go ahead and clear this out, clear. And then hit play. It returns three, D2, D1. They both come back as three. Only receiving the dot for one though, D1. Oh wait, did D2 come in as zero? D2 came in as zero, as zero, meaning it didn't actually have anything register as being equal to that. Um, ah, ah, I see the problem here. Oh my gosh, I see the problem here. Okay, so sorry but I have solved the, the bug. So what we're doing wrong, or what I'm doing wrong, <laughs> you haven't done anything wrong, um, is by comparing this value with its direction value. Anyway, let's just put it, let's put it simply. We're supposed to be comparing with the upward direction and I wasn't, so, so sorry. If someone was screaming that in the comments, you deserve an award. Um, yep, I made a big oopsie. We can now delete this, delete this. One, two, three, four, and delete this. And now that should return a two and a three. Please do. Three and a zero. Hmm. Three and a zero. Current roll three. Dice two returned a three still. Upward direction of self, upward direction of self. Ah, because this should be negative one, which was correct. One, negative one. Ah, because this should also be negative one. And this should also be negative one. Okay. Because, yep, yeah, that makes sense. So stop and play. So we rolled a three and a five. So we got our two and our five backwards, which is an easy fix. We just dupe that up there, delete the negative down here, and then hit stop, clear, and play. Is it all working? It is. Oh, thank goodness. Whew, that was that was a little bit stressful, you guys, but we have made it here. We now have some dice that roll accurately every time, and they seem to be pretty efficient, pretty fast. Six, throw it down. I can't read it. Oh, it's a four, and oh, it rolled again, so it's a... That's not nine. That is a one and a five. Why, why did you think this was nine? Double check. 
Now you think it's six. Okay. So it definitely is still stopping a little too early, I think. Seven. Like if I stop it, let's see, right here on the edge, what does it think? Five? Oh, no, it got it right still. Did you get that? Nine? Yep, it still got that. It's like very rarely wrong. Oh, it's just very rarely. I don't know why it was wrong that one time. Oh, because it was wrong because the dice hit it. It was a physics interaction and it didn't realize. Ooh, ooh, that is interesting. If it bounces into another dice and causes the dice to roll, it's not responding the correct value. Interesting. Okay, well, we want to solve for that as well. So let's take it a step further and note that we need this value updated let's say every one second we want the dice value to update um but we don't want it to update when it's moving so we say if the magnitude is greater than zero do nothing so we just will just comment do nothing do not thing okay there we go we can then loop no matter what sure every 0.5 seconds why not um, and then we don't need to do the loop when the object is released. We'll only run it from world start and then forever, which is not very efficient if I'm being quite honest with you. But it does mean that if, for instance, I grab this guy and I... What? What? <laughs> okay. It's reading eight. It's still reading eight. But can I like rotate them in the air? No, I can't rotate them in the air until they let go. Or wait, if I hold them really still? Oh, if I hold them really, really still, they will update. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm pretty happy with these. You guys have any more requests with these dice? I'm going to read your comments, and then we're going to wrap this one. Super happy with this. Um, it was way more work than I thought it was going to be, so I apologize for that. But I'm really, really excited to get these out to you guys. I'm also going to delete the debug prints in here. We don't need those anymore. And what you would want to do if you want to use these dice is here when you'd receive this display event, you'd send this value of one plus two off to any other thing. So whenever you want to interact with it, you just send it off to something and let that thing do the thing. Uh, so there we go. Whew. Oh, it's still debug printing somewhere. Are you? You are. Oops. Sorry. And delete that one there. Okay. Stop, clear, and play. <sighs> okay. I wasn't sure we were gonna make it through that one, you guys. I was really nervous. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Also, I just want to give a huge thank you to Michael Gregory. Thank you so much for your support. Seriously, really appreciate it. <sighs> okay. Check five and two. Thanks, Byron. Appreciate that. So glad we got that. Uh, we are now going to work on a voting system. So I'd love to hear some of your like, oh, yeah, voting system is still number one. Great job. Great job. Lots of people voting for building a house. I'm shocked. I'm actually really shocked by that. How many votes is that? Four votes. Wow. Well, maybe that's something we'll look into. I'm, I'm good to know that you guys are really interested in that topic. Um, so, the uh, voting system. Let's let's give that some chat. I'm going to end the poll now. No, no, I'll leave the poll running in case you guys want to keep voting on stuff. But we are going to do the voting system next. Um, oh my goodness. Legit wasn't sure. Wasn't sure we would finish that one. Man, those dice are cool though. Like, I think that's going to be a really fun asset to get out to you guys. So, um, hoping to add that today and then get that out to everybody. And, uh, yeah, probably not today. Now that I think about it, I am drained. Also, if you didn't know, in 55 minutes, Oculus is going live on Vidu Nights with his Horizon Live. And you can also join them in person at the Horizon Live studio. So, check that out in VR. There's 30 spaces. And it's a lot of fun. So, he's got a surpri surprise guest stopping by every Sunday, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. That's in 55, 54 minutes now. And, um, whew, 
All right, so last time I spoke to Michael Gregory about the voting system, uh, I basically wrote the script out and I was like, here you go. Um, I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what we did. I'm gonna start from the kind of some basics. I'd love to hear what you guys are interested in in terms of a voting system. I saw quite a few people commenting about what they'd like to see in a voting system. Um, so to me, my first thought about voting is like, we get a list of all the player names in the world. So I think, first off, we need a list of all the players. Secondly, we need to display that list in some form of like way that you can see how many votes people have. Um, and I want to make this as simple as possible. So uh, Michael is actually a relatively advanced scripter, but I don't want to take this to the advanced. Like this last, this last one was way, way too advanced. Uh, so apologies there. We're definitely gonna hold up on the advanced scripting and try to keep with something that's a little more manageable. The house market is expensive IRL. Better move into VR. Oh my gosh, you know, even in VR, Pigeon, it's hard to get a house. I know lots of people living in boxes right now, so please check out Tanzer VR's world if you uh, need a box. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's good. So, basically I want to make this as simple as possible. I definitely don't want to put this outside of the realm of uh, your ability to do it. So in my mind, the way I'm thinking is we tie into Horizon system. So if we're thinking about this being used in sort of a um, a leaderboard, perhaps. So you could imagine that when someone's in a world, they can collect votes, and maybe it stays on their leaderboard. Would that be cool? Do we want to like do like votes? Like you can you can amass a ton of votes and like it'll stay there on the leaderboard? Or do we want to clear the leaderboard out? Either or is really easy. And so what we imagine the script looking like is when player enters world, set leaderboard to zero if we want to clear it. And then um, we then add their votes out. And so on the leaderboard, it will show who has the current number of votes. And uh, I'm trying to think what else we can say about that. So then the leaderboard is actually what's tracking the player names. So we don't need to worry about converting. Oh, we do a little bit. We'll need to get the player name so that you know who you're voting for, but you'll be able to see on the leaderboard the tally. So we don't have to worry about creating like a scoreboard. Um, if you're interested in scoreboards, we have a couple of those on the, the channel. One new one actually just came out a little bit ago. Uh, so we got the scoreboards taken care of. We just need basically a system where people can hit a button to vote. We need a button to go up and down to select through names. I think I want to use a piece of paper. I really love the, the A and B buttons for moving up and down. It just makes it so much easier than using a bunch of triggers. And I'm trying to think what else. So yeah, you got your A and B button to move up and down through the list. You got your trigger button to pull who you want to vote for. And then when you pull that, the item gets respawned back so somebody else can vote. Anything else you guys want in the, um, in this? Michael, definitely your chance to, to ask for anything. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started building. I will take a peek and let's get at it. Okay. Oh my gosh, these dice are so nice. These dice are so nice. Bye! Okay, that was the ending for the video. We didn't, we didn't have an ending for a second. Now we do! <laughs> okay. All right, moving on over here, we have a new voting system. So let's take these dice and move them off to the side. There we go. And slide that over here. Okay, so voting system. The first thing we need to do, uh, let's start by doing an intro. I am not facing the camera. Hi there. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back, and today we're going to be creating a voting system so you can see who is at the top of the leaderboard, who's got the most votes, who is the most popular, who is the prom king and queen. I don't know, but it could be me, could be you, let's find out. And to do that, we're going to build a voting system. And so this voting system is going to be designed around this idea that people will be in VR, they'll be present to vote, the voting will last as long as the session is open, and you'll be able to track it per players who have been in that session. When somebody rejoins the session, they will... Um, sorry, I don't know if you can see that, but my headset power is apparently low. I'm plugged in, so that's scary. And uh, we'll just go as fast as we can. Um, that, that, that may be a bad idea, but this isn't a hard one. Um, man, I don't want to die. 
Oh, and I forgot. Oh my gosh, somebody's screaming at me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, live stream. Uh, we're back. <laughs> At least you could hear me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, my headset says it's going to die. That's scary. So here we go. Hey, everybody. Today, we're going to be building a voting system. And so to get us started, we're going to open up our menu, head into the systems tab. We do not need a player variable, but we do need a leaderboard. So we're going to click new leaderboard. This will be descending and we're going to call this votes. Now, the thing that we want to do here is determine and I will let you guys determine this, but I'm going to show you how to do this. So here we've created votes. It should appear. Might need to go back to see it. Maybe. I'm uncertain. Create. Okay. A little unclear if this is working or not. We're going to go ahead and pull out a script. We're also going to pull out... We're gonna go ahead and pull out a script as well as a leaderboard. We'll go and scale this leaderboard up nicely so that people can see it. And then looking at this leaderboard, we're gonna adjust the properties real quick to say 10. We're gonna also type in votes and then we'll keep it static. Leaderboard doesn't show an option for our leaderboard variable. And I don't know why, so I'm gonna create another one one last time, just give it a gobbledygook name, doesn't really matter, and click create. Still not working. I am not sure why. Maybe I didn't create this world. I might not be the creator of this world. <laughs> okay, that would do it. Let's go into a world that I have created then. Okay, and create new world, blank world, call this voting, and create. What are we going to do about the power of my headset? What are we going to do? Oh, gosh. Hi, thanks for doing these. Learned a lot. Great to have you, Will. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. I'm talking into my headset. My headset is on its last legs. I'm using Link here, and I don't know how much power I've got left. Um, nervous. Very, very nervous there. Because in my mind, I'm plugged into power, right? But actually, it's like, uh, <laughs> just kidding. No, you're not. Um, okay. So we'll use the intro from before, but now we're in a blank world. Welcome. So the first thing we're going to do is pull out a script gizmo and a leaderboard gizmo. We're going to go ahead and scale that up nicely. We're going to open it up. And then in our menu, we're going to head down to the systems tab, head over to leaderboards, create a new leaderboard variable called votes. There we go. And click create. We'll leave it as descending so that it sorts its way descending. There it is. Awesome. Now over here, we can select that leaderboard votes from the drop down. We'll give it a title that matches its name. V-O-T-E-S. That's right. And we'll set it to 10 so you can see all the players that are getting voted for. Nice. Now we're not going to attach a script to it, but we do need a script. So, and we do need to run on something. Hmm. Well, this thing is going to actually be a piece of paper with a text gizmo attached. And why is that? Well, that's because this is going to be how you uh, submit your vote. So you're going to grab this piece of paper and vote for so-and-so. And it'll say vote for, and then it'll say break. And then it'll say somebody's name. So we put in like Lake So Five, and then we break one more time, and then we say question mark. And so you get this on the piece of paper. And we're gonna paint this a nice kind of pleasant green. Very nice. And we can attach script one, not to the text object. No, we're worried about. Uh, no, we're not attaching this to script. <laughs> no, I said no. Uh, okay, we will come back to this, but we do need to get this paper set up. I'm also going to open up the properties, turn auto fit off so that we can set a static size and then don't have to worry about that changing scale as the names change because there's going to be some people have really long names. 
I don't have a very long name. Okay, there is that. We're gonna scale that down nicely. We're also gonna give it kind of a nice handle. So maybe we'll build a piece of handle paper here and shrink that down into what feels like a handle. Very nice. Okay, so you're gonna be able to grab this. You're gonna be able to select your votes. We're going to group it together. And that is that. So you come in here, you'll grab it, you'll select your votes, nice. Now this is going to run script one and there we go. Then let's give script one a better name and we'll call this vote wand, voting wand. And so what I promised you is that we would talk about how to make this work for a lot of different scenarios. And so when the player enters the world, when they exit the world, there's some things we might wanna do. So over here under the values tab, we have set world leaderboard score for player. Now when the player enters the world, we may want to set their votes to zero and we'd hit force so that it resets it no matter what. And the reason you'd wanna do this is because you want players to start fresh when they come back to the world. If you don't want them to start fresh and you want them to have votes forever, then don't leave this here. Then we also wanna say when the player exits the world, let's set it to zero. And the reason we wanna do this is so that when they leave the world, their votes aren't remaining and that you can presently see who is present in the world being voted for, not people who've come here in the past and been voted for. Because this can only display 10 people at a time, so you really don't wanna have people who haven't been in the world in forever who just happen to have a lot of votes. So there we go, we got world is entered by, world is exited by and we're clearing their score. And so that is one methodology. So we're gonna go ahead and stay with that. I've now realized we are missing a, no, no, this is fine. Um, yeah, this is fine because we're gonna teach you something really cool. And I was trying to teach uh, Michael, who's the requester of this um, tutorial. And so hopefully he'll pick this up as we're going through. So the next thing we need to do is we need a list of players. So these are gonna be called PLIDs. And that's just a short way of saying player IDs. We can then hit the list function, click confirm. And we also need a list of numbers and these are gonna be called votes. And so every time somebody gets voted for, they're going to get a vote. And we also need a list of players who have voted. So we're gonna check the list option, select player and call this have voted, has voted. That's that's vote, has voted. There you go, <laughs> confirm. And so what we wanna do is say bum, 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 when object is grabbed by player and then what we're going to say here is if they are not in the list so we grab the not operator and then we check if the player is in the list so there is a list contains item so we say if the player is not in the has voted list then we do nothing, but if they are in that list, we do need to do something. So I did this backwards, that's okay. So we're gonna say, if it does contain them, what are we doing? We are going to force release self. So we force release this grabbable object. You can't grab this if you voted. And we're also gonna say you can't vote if um, that's happened. So when index trigger is pressed is what's gonna cause the vote to be going off. So we say, when index trigger is pressed, if you have already voted, then um, that's not gonna happen. So this is where we had the not operator, right? So we'll delete this, grab that not function from the top again. And there it is. And so by saying they have not voted allows them to vote. Okay, and this is because people have grabbed items before and then quickly press their trigger finger to cause votes to go off. So that's why we have this extra if here. Okay. Um, we also might want to save an origin position and an origin rotation. I'm not going to save the rotation. I just want to make this as simple as possible. So we're going to save origin position and click confirm. And then when world is started, so we'll go to the top here and say when world is started, we want to set our origin position. And if you haven't seen this tutorial on saving origin position, I encourage you to check it out. It is a recent video posted to the channel and it allows you to save an origin position and then move an item back to that position, which is great. So when the object is released or force released here, we want to return. So we're gonna create a new event at the bottom called return, drop down, name this return. And that is going to allow this item to move to the origin position. We won't rotate it, but we will move it. And that is great. And then to cause this to go off in all the places, we will send 
this when it's force released we will also send the return event and if this is um, so we say else meaning it they are in the list we will also send return to self we can also double force release in case that helps get through any possible glitches okay so there we go we've got this object returning we also need to return this object to its origin position when it's let go so we say when object is released by player we will also send return perfect okay so now we've got this instant return we have this setting up here at the beginning we also need to set up the list of players so we're going to add players to the list so on the operators tab scrolling down near the bottom you're going to find add to list so when the player enters the world we want to add them to the player id list we also want to remove them when they leave the world so we'll go to the operators tab and remove item from lists and then remove the player from the player ID list. Perfect. So now we've got a list of all the players. And what we want to do is iterate through a list of people who are online. So we're going to grab number and call this um, I for iterator. Click confirm. And then we have a couple events. And so just to kind of walk you through what we've done here so far, I keep this logically ordered for myself. So I just want to make sure that you're following with what we've done, which is when world has started, we've saved our origin position. When the player enters, we've add them. We've also set their votes to zero. When they exit, we remove them from the list and we set their votes back to zero. Um, we should also remove them from the um, has voted list if they are in the list. So we say, if the player is in that list. So we say, if that player is in the list, then remove them from the has voted list. So we clear them from both lists. And then when object is grabbed by player, we are going to not do anything really specific unless they've already voted. And when index trigger is pressed, we're going to cause them to vote. And so if they have not voted, this is going to register a vote. And then the vote registers here. And so the iterator represents the position the player that we're, we're voting for. So we can set, and I will show you. So we're going to set value at index and in list. So we're setting the value at the index iterator in the list votes, and we're going to set it to be plus one. So we go and grab the plus operator from the top of our operators tab, and then we're grabbing the item at index iterator from the list. So back down under list, you'll see get item from list and then we plug that into a and the item we're getting is the item at iterator position in the votes list and then the amount we're adding is one and so this allows us to add one to the votes that people have received there we go okay so now that we've added a vote we also need to add this player to the vote list so then we come back down here and say add that player has voted to the has voted list Okay, so now that the player has been added to the has voted list, we also want to force release and send return, which I guess we can just do no matter what. So let's delete this, delete the else and move this outside of the else because this is going to happen no matter what, right? Yeah, so that's great. Um, sweet. So we've added a vote and then we say when object is released, send return, when return is received. And so at the very bottom, I'm going to start building in this kind of iterating through the list. And so this is when button one or two is pressed. And now button two is the top button and button one is the bottom button. So I put them in reverse order. So button two and then button one. And then we think of that as going up one. And so the first thing we do is grab the set two and we're going to put this here and there. And then I just wanted to kind of like start you mentally thinking about how this is going to function. And the way it's going to work is the bottom is going to minus and the top is going to plus and the amount is one. So I'm going to grab that one from up here and just drop it into the right side of these. And what are we iterating or what are we adjusting? We're adjusting the iterator. So we adjust that value by going up one or minus one. The thing is that this isn't um, within the bounds. So we need to make sure it stays within the bounds of the length of the player ID list. And so to do that, we can then say, uh, we're going to grab another set two just to use this so we can drag stuff between them. And then operators, we're going to grab, we could use clamp, but we really want to just make sure it's within the maximum. So we say um, minimum. <laughs> it's like it's inverse of what you would think. Um, so we say I plus one and then whatever is smaller. So if this tries to go beyond the length of the list minus one, then it's outside of the bounds. So we grab this minus one from below 
and then scroll down to lists where you can get length of list. And this will allow us to get the length of the player ID list. It's currently zero. If there's one player in the list, their index would be zero. That's why it subtracts one. So it returns zero as the index, which prevents I from ever being greater than zero. So now that we've got that down here, we need to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, which is where we use the max function. So we have max right here, which does the inverse of min. And so we put I minus one here. And then in the right side, we actually put zero since the smallest value is zero, which returns zero if this ever tries to go to negative one. So this keeps I within the bounds, which is great. And we have now moved it up and down. The next thing we need to do is display the right person. So to do that, we're going to send event to self and the event is going to be called display. So we'll call this display and click confirm and duplicate this down below. And then over on our operators tab or on our variables tab, we need, <laughs> we need to create a new object variable referencing the text object. So I'm just going to call this text and click confirm. Then go to the actions tab where we can get display text. But before we do that, we actually need to go to the top here and grab when event is received, drop that at the very bottom and select display from the dropdown. Now we can go back to the actions tab, grab the display text, bring that over and then head back over to the variables tab where we've got text. We'll drop that in here. So now we can display the player's name on the text object. And so we're going to delete the string. We're going to go to our operators tab, scroll down to player. I'm going so fast. I'm sorry. Uh, but there's always that 0.75x. I've heard it works really fabulous. <laughs> So then we've got name of player. And so this is where the magic starts to happen. So we scroll down to the list where we can get item from list. And the item we're getting is at the index I. And the list that we're getting this from is the list of player IDs. So we drive that over. And now we are displaying the name of the current player that you'd be voting for. And the last thing we need to do here is when the index trigger is pressed and we register the vote, we need to make sure the vote gets registered up here on the leaderboard. So that happens under the values tab where we have a set world leaderboard and we can drag that over into here. So the value we're changing is for votes. The player we're changing this for is that same one we used before, which is get item from list at iterator position in the player ID list. So I've duplicated that down, swapped it out with player IDs, and the value we're setting it to is this exact same value here. So we can just get the uh, updated value, get I from list. And we want to force it. Sure, why not? Um, it doesn't, shouldn't need to be forced, but you know, whatever that'll be fine and um ba -bum -ba -bum -ba -bum -ba -bum. yeah i think that works great so with that we've now got this functional um i'm actually going to turn forcing off because if we make this as an asset and somebody uses this differently that could confuse them so okay what well, the reason this is and the reason i'm thinking this is because if you decided not to reset the votes when somebody came back um you'd want to use their player persistent variable instead of a player variable which we're not doing today um but if you were forcing it it could cause them to lose all their votes and so in this system you'd have to regain all your votes before you could get a higher leaderboard score okay so with that, this is all set up and functional. So we'll go ahead and give it a try and see if I made any mistakes, which is not uncommon as you're well aware. We'll go ahead and zoom in, open up this text object, zoom out. We can now reference the text, grabbing this text pill, dropping it over here. And we wanna make this interactive. We're not gonna give it physics, but we are done. And oh, you know what? Um, it says vote for lakes and that's what i wanted it to say in text and we're not doing that so let's fix that real quick so here it says display name we want this to concatenate with two other strings so we're going to go to the top and grab the plus symbol concatenates a fancy way of saying plus uh, so we put name of put that in the center and then we can delete the top one and then on the bottom one we grab the string input from the bottom and then we can get the string input from the bottom of the values tab, dropping that into the left and to the right. And then we know that we want to put a break after the name. So we type in the BR symbol. And then we also want to put a question mark. And then at the front of this, we want to put in vote for and then vote for and then followed by a break. So it breaks it onto another line. There we go. Perfect. And script stop. And the other thing that's wrong here is it's not updating when a player comes into the world. And so when a player enters the world or exits, it does change the display. And so we should set 
i back to zero. So whenever a player enters the world, it changes the display. So we want to make sure that the display gets updated, but it doesn't change the display because we're not changing the order. It's only when they leave the world that it changes the order. And in that case, let's see, how do we solve for that? So <clears throat> when the world is exited by the player, we set I to be minus one mint. So using, so we send button one, press what grabbed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We really want to do this function when a player leaves the world. So when player exits, oh, very low power. We're really getting there. Probably going to crash here. Let's get through this. Oh, almost done. Okay. So right here, when player exits the world, we want to make sure that the display gets updated. So that's what this is doing is it's subtracting one since one player is left. And then it's sending display to self. And it's also making sure that it stays within zero and that will update. And then we also want to do send display to self when a player enters the world. So I wanted to grab send display to self, put that right here when player enters. And so now when I enter the world, it should do nothing because it's my name. There we go. And I've grabbed it and there's nobody else to vote for. So if I try to press the button, it's not going to do anything, but we won't register any errors. So we'll check for that. And then if I press trigger, my value should go to one, please. <laughs> please <laughs> oh and it's not force releasing out of my hand okay um maybe i did miss something i have been going a little fast let's see what i missed uh, bum, 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 bum. we add player to the had voted list we force release self this is running on that so that is fine send display which does appear to be working because I had, oh, can't get list item, zero to one got zero. Um, let's see, button one is pressed. It's getting it from the player ID list. Oh, um, dun, 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 dun. nope, that's fine. Uh, length of player IDs was I not added to the player IDs for some reason? Add player to player IDs when world is entered by player. Was I not entering the world? Let's play, jump in. I've entered the world. Grab this, press index trigger, and it should have force release, but it didn't. So there's some issue happening when I press my index trigger saying can't get list item between zero and negative one. So when index trigger is pressed, oh, because there's nobody in the has voted lists. So it's not able to check. So <laughs> really, <laughs> this seems strange. I didn't know it would do that. Um, let's try adding the server player to the list. Uh, and see if that works. Add server player to the has voted list since the server can't vote. Is that really what's going on? Hmm. Let's try that again. Oh, wait, maybe? No. Okay, so it's still not working. Come back into build mode. It says the same issue, so it wasn't that. Um, go ahead and delete that now. And it's saying remove player from player ID list. Uh, when world is entered by player, when set votes to player. Oh, it could be this. It's not removing me from the player. That could be what it is. If it has voted contains player, it should have. Then it's removed both of us. Both of me. <laughs> set votes for player to zero. Force true. So I. Ah, this could be the issue that we're getting. So when leaving, there's nobody left in the list. So it's trying to display something that's not really there. Um, let's see if that removes the bug from happening. Okay, grab, press trigger, nothing happens on the scoreboard. Let go still works, still getting a bug. So we should put some debug prints in here, um, but I did see that that would be actually an issue. So let's continue looking. Make sure it's pressed, forcefully self, send return to self. And an object is released, send return to self. When return is received, move self to origin position. When button two is pressed, Length of player IDs. Why? I feel like I'm not getting added or something weird. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, yep, this was an easy mistake. I'm so sorry. Okay, so when the player enters the world, we need to add a value to the votes list of zero to be running in parallel to the player ID list. And then when they leave the world, we also need to remove that value from the votes list. So we say remove, and this actually has to happen beforehand because 
under here, we need to get item from the votes list at the index. Oh, excuse me. Remove item. Actually, there's an easier way to do this. Uh, to, to, to do remove item at index, and then it's from the votes list, and the index is the index of that. So we get the index of the player in the player ID list, since these lists run in parallel. And there we go. So that should be the solution. Here we go. Try it again. Press index trigger. Hey. Hey, it works. Yay, <laughs> we've done it. We have a voting system. And if I check build mode, no issues. If I stop and reset and play, I can come in here and try cycling through. If there was more players online, this would be changing the names. And then I can grab it and vote. It forces out of my hand, the votes go up and there's no errors. Ah, fabulous. Well, that was awesome. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in Horizon. Bye. <sighs>
like Pigeon actually was here. I don't know if she's still here, but she was did a amazing series earlier this year doing uh, creator interviews. Some of the best creator interviews I've seen in her eyes and just absolutely fantastic. And then we also have Elwood, who's now doing shorts. He does these like 30 to 60 second little shorts um, featuring Diener, who goes and does these tours of amazing worlds in Horizon. So you can learn about so many great worlds. I love watching those because I just don't get a lot of time to get out, especially with baby in the house now. Um, and so getting to see some of these amazing worlds you guys are working on is so awesome. So I love watching that on video nights. And uh, honestly, I watch it on video nights first too. Like that's where I'm seeing it. I'm not like seeing it beforehand. So uh, it's you and me together. So feel free to hit that bell so you know when it's coming out. And um, yeah, please, if you can subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Whew. Surprise guest every Sunday. <laughs> Look. Uh, yes, yes, please do subscribe for the live streams as well. Yes, absolute legend. Oculus has been doing Horizon Live for quite a while, actually. The Horizon Live was created like six months ago, and yeah, just so excited to see it reignited with such, such great passion from the community coming in, and absolutely love, love Horizon Live, so... Whew. I think we're going to wrap it there, guys. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment on anything else, on any other videos you're watching. Um, we're going to probably make two tutorials out of this one. Um, I think we got two really good tutorials in. I'll have to go through and see exactly what we can get out of it, but absolutely fabulous night. I look forward to next Sunday where we'll do another one of these, same time, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, whoo! <laughs> brain is still just like uh, that was crazy oh there's pigeon look at there she is <laughs> boop, boop, boop. well i'll say hang out here for another few minutes you guys in case you guys have any other questions you want to ask um i'd love to hear some more thoughts about what we can do with apple picker or apple clicker actually i mistyped it but um Apple click so so first of all I think economies in Horizon is so much fun like um, when I play little games it's always there's always some economy aspect to it you know like digital money not real money but like you know play money and uh, whether you're playing a game of Monopoly or a game of Cookie Clicker there there's just some usual element of like I've earned X number of things now how do I use that to fi finance and make this game more fun and so. I'd, I'd be very curious to know some of your guys' ideas about how we can um, implement an economy system, what you might be interested in seeing, what might be a challenge for you. Um, I know that last video that we just did was a little bit hard. Oh, what we just did? I'd like <laughs> ask Lakes. <laughs> yeah, this is a good chance. You know, a great opportunity, honestly. Um, I wish I had more time to do like Q&A sessions like this, but seriously, I uh, appreciate you guys all coming out on Sunday and uh, spending some time with us here. It is a blast uh, for me and for, I hope you. <laughs> and, um, hey, welcome from Brazil, Andre. So great to have you, that's awesome. I am really, really hoping, yeah, we, we should open up to the world. That, that's my, my, my prayer. I really wanna see more of the world coming into Horizon. It's. Uh, it, it's great, really. Oculus is leading that charge, actually. He's got a lot of great community efforts on Facebook you should definitely check out. Um, yeah. Let's see. The thing I was saying, though, is, like, okay, economy, like, where do we take that, right? So, you know, on the one hand, you could buy, like, an automaton that's automatically clicking. So I guess what I was trying to say is what we just worked on was... Um, can you remember? Like my mind is just like cleaned out. And I was like, whoop, we're done. Moving on to the next one. Uh, what did we just do? How did I forget? Um, <laughs> oh, it was a voting system. That's right. Okay. Duh, duh. It was a voting system. So like, I know that seemed relatively complex. I'm, I'm, I'm sure many watching that video were like, wow, this is way harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, that was me dumbing it down. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. Oh, it does. It really is. So like, I, I want to be very careful when we like approach the economy that I don't go to that level and where it's like, it's dumbed down, but it's like still unobtainable because the biggest thing about economy systems, like a voting system is something you can just replicate step by step and make that. Um, and Michael, I think has enough like scripting prowess to actually modify it to what his needs are. So fingers crossed that works great for him. 
Um, but the, and like, heck, we might even get it out to the public. We'll see if, if we can. I, I'm not a huge fan of doing assets, and this is what I was trying to say, is I'm not a huge fan of doing assets that incorporate player variables or leaderboard variables because they're hard to implement if you don't understand the fundamentals. So when we work on this economy, like the first thing we built was a just simple, like you press the button, it adds one to your score and it displays it on a leaderboard. Like it's, it doesn't get any easier than that. And I wanna make sure that whatever we do with economy is staying that easy. You know, like we really don't wanna take this to a point where it's hard to do. We wanna make these things uh, accessible so that you can start slowly building up your skills to make your own really powerful scripts and your own economies, um, where, whatever that may be. So in my head, what I'm thinking is, um, if your normal press of a clicker is one, we should buy. We should make an upgrade that's like, for 10 apples, you can buy a double picker where you can pick two apples at the same time or click, you know, press for two apples. And so it just doubles. It's like, okay, you gotta pay 10, but you get double. And then every time you pay 10 for another one, it goes up by like five. And so the next one's going to cost you 15 to get it upgraded. And then it's like 20 and so on and so forth. And so you eventually have to just earn so many apples. So we built something really simple like that. I know that doesn't sound simple, but the way that it's done is the clicker itself has a variable for how much it goes up by. And so that just updates. You just send an update event to it and that allows it to update. And this other thing just deducts from the value. So it says if you have enough um, money in your, your apples, then we can subtract that and apply that bonus by sending the event over there. And then we track it locally inside of that. So I think that's a relatively simple one we can implement next week. Um, I'm trying to think what else we could do with economy. So I'd really like to hear your suggestions. Yeah, so good, so good. Next week, Michael, it's gonna be next week. I like, I blink and the week is over, I swear. It's it's kind of scary, because I'm like, I'm like, I literally spent 12 hours one day working on Horizon and I didn't even get into Horizon. It was like mind blowing. Can you imagine working on Horizon for 12 hours without being in VR? It was crazy. Um, but sometimes that's how my days are. It's like, I'm just sending emails all day or whatever it is. And so I blink and the week's over and we're here on Sunday again. So I'm looking forward to getting that asset pack updated with a lot of these new assets. I know people want the slime. I really want to get that one out, and um, I can hear baby crying, so I think I'm going to go say hi to my wife and baby and make sure they're all doing good. Um, you guys, please join Oculus 410 in 12 minutes on Video Nights. I posted a link just a second ago. You can go click on that to see it on the live stream, and you can just put it in the background while you're doing whatever. Or you can go and join them in person in VR. You can ask questions live. You can interact, throw your confetti. Um, and, yeah, it's an awesome show. Uh, Pigeon says... Could we buy automatic apple pickers after X apples collected? I agree. I think that's a great one. And so I ask, I'm, I'm like asking myself this question of like, like, okay, so I think the buying an additional apple is like step one. So that's an easy enough upgrade to the apple picker economy system. Step two would definitely be like, we need autonomous apple pickers. So I'm imagining a robot that's just doing this animation, right? So you just put that animation on back and forth and then you can upgrade that robot. And so I feel like that's like a part three, right? So I feel like part one is we build this kind of like thing. Uh, and then a part three to it would be, now let's build a robot that's, that's pressing the button. It's not actually pressing the button, it just looks like it, but it's sending an event that adds to the player's balance because they own that robot. And then the part that I think we go further from that is then upgrading that robot. So it's kind of like tied in because it's basically the same thing as before, but it's like tied into that robot. And so then the thing I think we go even a step further, if we could get to a part four. And so earlier in this video, um, y'all might have seen that thing that I shouldn't have been showing that Oculus is like, you did what? No, Lakes, don't do that. Um, so I don't know if he's, I don't think he saw this, but early in the stream, I showed the debug print of the time code blocks. I've never used them before, but now having seen the get time parameters and how they work, it would be pretty easy for us to build in a like how many minutes have elapsed apply that many apples so like if you leave for two days and come back you're like while you were gone your robot earned you x number of apples we could set something up like that and i think that would be like the final like we have built it we've built the ultimate apple picker and when Lindsay's watching this later because galactic victoria also knows Lindsay, um 
absolutely adores clicker games. I think she's going to go gaudy, gaggy, gaga. I don't know what the word is, but you know what I mean. Um, so I like the idea. Looks like you guys do. And uh, yeah, looking forward to Horizon Live tonight. Yes, that would be cool with the robot. Thanks, bitch. <laughs> <sighs> well, ta-ta for now. Um, if you haven't already, please leave a like on the video. You guys made it through here. Uh, I see we got 18 likes, so that's awesome. Uh, so thank you guys if you've already liked. And we will see you at Horizon Live in just nine minutes. Again, that's Horizon Live. You can find it in Horizon Worlds under Horizon Live. You can also find it in Video Nights. Going live in nine minutes. We'll see you there. Bye! And now enjoy the back of my head. Oh, oh. Just kidding. <laughs> or, well, I wasn't kidding because you were. Um, hi, Rainmaker. That would be cool. Thank you. <laughs>